That's right, everybody. There can only be one champion. And tonight is the night that we cut it down to the championship five. Here with Mid-South Madness, this is the round of eight in the playoffs. So there are eight playoff drivers. We are cutting it to the top five tonight. And then those top five will make money next week uh, because top five get paid out in this league. So here we are here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the Hold'em or Fold'em 150, and that is truly a really, really good name for this race because you're either going to hold him or you're going to fold and get out of here next week. So uh, 100 laps tonight, two fast repairs out there. So if you get some damage, then great. You can come in, get it all repaired, get right back out there on the track. And right now we're showing that the top six are getting paid tonight. Uh, it might be the top seven, depending on if we get a couple more guys in here right at the last minute. But right now, top six are getting paid paid out they're out there practicing right now having a great time doing it and man i cannot wait to see what happens tonight as we get rid of three playoff drivers so three playoff dreams will end here in las vegas where dreams could come true and nightmares happen as well so uh, let's take a look really quick uh, let's jump into an announcement. So we, we've already talked about next season's leagues with the uh, Speed Racing Network Virtual Series. So we are going to have three leagues there. There's going to be a Truck Series, an Xfinity Series, and a Cup Series. And you can see there's different I ratings there. There's different price points. There's different prize fund amounts. And so just kind of depends on what your I rating is, uh, what your skill level is, and then how much money you kind of want to make and how much money you want to put up at the same time. So Big setups for all three of these leagues and all three of these leagues are going to run on the same schedule. Uh, one of the cool things about that is, let's say the truck series, it's, it's going to be on Wednesday nights. If you win in the truck series, then we're going to give you a free entry into the Xfinity series, which will be held on Thursday nights. And so you get to come back to the same exact track get to try it again in the Xfinity cars. If you're in the Xfinity series and you win, then we're going to move you up to the cup series, get, let you uh, try some, some stiffer competition up in that league. And so a lot of fun being able to move uh, up those series if you win those races. So be on the lookout for that. But the big announcement tonight is the S rock series. So this is the speed racing open cup series. It's kind of like the I rock series, but it's the S rock series. It's a $500 first place. And this is going to be 10 bucks a week, 18 weeks following the NASCAR schedule as closely as we can make it at least. And uh, 75% distance races. So these are some long races. They will test your stamina. They will test your skill. And this is going to be open setups. And so it is going to be an absolute blast we're going to have a great time doing it uh, we've got a lot of drivers that are already interested in it so be on the lookout for more information on the s rock series as it comes forward so right now, let's jump in. Every week we get you know, we get into this uh, this fun little segment called TR's Corner. Thomas Rutherford, my old broadcast partner and one of the drivers in this league, uh, he was the runner-up last season in the Mid-South Madness League. So he gets to do an interview every single week, and we have a great time listening to that interview. So we're going to pull that up right now. He is with Brad Herman, who is last week's winner. Uh, he's not in the playoffs, but he is an up-and-coming driver. Uh, definitely be on the lookout for him. So let's hear from Brad Herman. Hey, everybody. Welcome to TR's Corner. Tonight, we're in fabulous Las Vegas for the next last round of the Mid-South Madness Playoffs Season 2. And I'm here tonight with Mr. Brad Herman. Brad, how you doing? Good, man. How about you? Doing real well. Just watched that exciting cup race with Harvick trying to dump uh, the 18 car there at the end. I know he's your guy. Sorry he didn't make it in. Uh, he raced his tail off. You can only give it to him. He uh, did what he could with a bad car. Yeah, yeah, he certainly did. But you know, let's talk about you a little bit while we've got you on the show tonight before our race here in Vegas. Um, you got a win last week, Kansas, right? You brought it home, took the checkered flag. You've had some strong runs this back half of the season. Um, you know, it takes a lot to win in eye racing. You've gotten into it. How long have you been in, uh, been doing eye racing? Uh, I actually got eye racing a couple months ago. I, uh, I actually race a lot on uh, NASCAR heat. I uh, almost made uh, pro league over there the past two years, but cards didn't go my way and uh, just ended up trying to go after I racing after that. So you've gotten into mid South madness uh, for the leagues. I've been running since 09. I haven't done any leagues. It's been my first run these, this past two seasons. 
like it a lot. I like it more personally than the um, than the official races. But sure, you're on a team as well with Bronco Motorsports. Um, that's kind of a reinvented team for this season. What's what's been the strength of Bronco Motorsports for season two? Uh, I think just us as a team working together and uh, having that teamwork, trying to make everybody faster and uh, just rallying together. Do you guys practice throughout the week as a team? Uh, Chris is a pretty busy guy, so uh, I try to help him as much as I can. He tries to get as much practice in as he can. And uh, no, we, we do a lot of practicing separately, but we try to come together as a, as a whole. Very cool. We talked about your win at Vegas. Obviously, that's not just a testament to uh, yourself, but that effort you guys as a team put in. Tonight, we're going to Las Vegas. What do you think, not only uh, your chances, but also Bronco Motorsports, what do you think of your all's chances this evening? Uh, I don't know yet. I feel pretty fast. Um, can all change, though, in a racing scenario. What's the biggest thing to look for tonight at that track? Tell you where I think is going to be a, a main factor and who can uh, use it the best and to their to how they want to use it. So Mid South Madness and Speed Racing Network through SRN, we do all the broadcasting. Pretty good, pretty good broadcast for the people at home to watch uh, on YouTube and on the uh, SpeedRacingNetwork.com website. But you you stream quite a bit. I see all of your uh, links. You put them through Discord and through the channels. Uh, tell us what, what what are you accomplishing with your Twitch stream? Where can we go see? You? Uh, I just want to give a shout out to the Speed Racing Network guys. I love watching the broadcast. They're always uh, very professional, and uh, I love watching and going back and seeing what they got going on. Um, yeah, I, I try to stream as much as I can, pretty much every day. Anytime I got something going on, um, I just hit a, a Twitch affiliate not too long ago, and uh, just trying to build my fan base and maybe make it somewhere someday off that. Pretty cool, man. Congratulations on the uh, the Twitch affiliate, too, as well. But, um, you know, for the SRN Mid-South Madness Championships, you're leading first place in the contingency championship, the championship, so congratulations on that. Hopefully you can have a good finish tonight and maintain first place. But as far as the main championship goes, who is your pick for the season? We won't tell them. They'll have to watch this after the fact. Um, I think Bobby Brill is going to get it done. Uh, he's been real consistent all year, and if not, Pettit might be able to spoil it. Well, we've definitely heard Pettit quite a bit on the show, as well as Burrell. Look forward to seeing them battle it out tonight. Also look forward to battling with you on the track, and best of luck to you. Thanks for being on the show, Brad. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Brad Herman with our very own TR in TR's Corner. And we absolutely love that segment, Brandon. I, I love hearing from the guys. It is a neat league when you can really get to know every single individual in there. Yeah, and, and that's that's a big thing that I think, you know, we have as a takeaway that a lot of other leagues don't have here, you know, with Mid-South Madness is you see the drivers every week and you get to know them based on their driving styles, but a lot of times you don't get to learn the guys like you do with, you know, TR's corner, mid South madness, uh, speed racing network. Like we really kind of hone in on the personal side of these guys, you know, the guys that you're watching week in and week out, even, even for some of these guys that are out here racing, you know, they're learning the guys through TR's corner, the things that they didn't even know. And I think it is a super, super awesome concept. Yeah. We, we absolutely enjoy getting to know everybody, but let's, let's talk about the teams right now because the team aspect in mid South madness is a little different than some other leagues as well. So we have uh, most of these teams have four members on them and we take the top three each race from each team and we give them points based off that and steak dance seasoning has gone out and they have opened up this risk it for the brisket team championship. They've put up $200 for the first place team. And so definitely go to steak dance, Com, get your steak seasoning. I had some steak seasoning tonight. I actually put it on burgers tonight. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but here's our our team standings, Brandon. Yeah, and honestly, still yet going to make sure I, I try the steak dance. Just haven't, haven't been able to do so as of yet. But it is coming. And when it comes, my wife and the rest of my family are probably going to be tired of eating steak dance seasoning. But I think this one's pretty uh, – pretty cut and drive right now you know you've got a, a one team runaway so far in the season but never count out revved racing no definitely uh rev racing has basically kept up with striker motorsports for the past three weeks and so if striker has one bad week then this could all go up in a puff of smoke 
And so, uh, so we got Striker Motorsports up there in first place with 1,336 points. Rev Racing just about 55 points behind, so they're just holding strong there. Pretty much everybody else, uh, I mean, they could they could win out uh, these last two races and it wouldn't matter. So it's it's down to the two uh, two top teams there. I, I have a uh, a little bit of an inside scoop, and Brandon, I already know you know this as well. Striker Motorsports only has three members tonight. Yeah, and, and that's going to be, you know, that's going to be huge in, in deciding what's going to happen here. You know, the, the door seemingly has been cracked for Rev Racing, but with only three drivers here tonight, it has been busted wide open. And the only guys that can stop themselves from capitalizing is Rev Racing. Well, let's take a look at these teams. With the Paints by Night team introductions, so if you have any iRacing paint needs, definitely follow Ashton Knight on Trading Paints. Go to SpeedRacingNetwork.com and order a paint from him. He does absolutely phenomenal work. So Paints by Night has our team introductions tonight. We'll start off with Striker Motorsports. Yeah, and Striker Motorsports kind of been the front of the pack all season long, so to speak. I mean, it's been tough to beat these guys, Sean. They've been... You know, even you know, you look at, at Dean Brummett in the 25 car. The man last week had COVID and double pneumonia, still stayed alive in the championship. So, I mean, it, even when they're down, you can kick them, you can beat them, but you're not going to defeat them. That's absolutely true. Now, next up, the guys that are trying to defeat them, pretty much the only team that has a chance at it, Revved Racing. They've been consistent all year long. Yeah, and, and even with, you know, the good things that we've had to say about Striker Motorsports and how strong and talented they've been all season, they've gotten away, you know, they've taken the shadow away with a lot of teams. Revved Racing is not that race team. Revved Racing is still on their heels. They have been every week, and I think they will be for many, many weeks to come. Yeah, Adam Pettit in the 57 and, and Aaron Gerwitz in the 09, they are both still in the playoffs. And Aaron Gerwitz is, he's peaking at the right time. And Adam Pettit has won two races in about the past five weeks. So, uh, so both of them peaking at the right time here in the playoffs. Yeah. And honestly, you know, you, you talk about guys, you know, personal personalities as we talked earlier in the broadcast, you know, with like TR's Corner. One of my favorite race personalities here in Mid South Madness. And I, I didn't really know him that well most of the season, but here as of late, it seems like we've been running things together and having having a good time. Aaron Gerwitz, excellent personality on that guy, and I think he's going to have an excellent finish tonight. And I believe he might punch his way into the championship race next week, Sean. He definitely has a great shot at it, but he's got to watch out for one of the guys on Stake Dance Racing. Daniel Bowdler is still in the championship here. He's got one win on the season, but the other three guys on the team are absolutely phenomenal drivers as well. Yeah, this this goes, you know, just back to the whole team aspect of things where, you know, we, we talked multiple times about how uh, the team aspect has changed Mid-South Madness versus what we've seen in the past. Even with these guys here and Daniel Bowler being the last standing guy in the playoffs, he's really got his whole team behind him. So when you say Daniel Bowler is making this championship run, it's Daniel Bowler and the rest of Steak Dance Racing because they are such a cohesive unit. That if one succeeds, they all succeed. You know, this was such a good team uh, during the, the regular season that all four of them actually made the playoffs. Now, unfortunately, three of them have have kind of bowed out of the playoffs since then. But their motto is "got to risk it for the brisket," and that's what they do. Yeah, and, and they they take more chances, you know, than than anyone else. I mean, if you look back to last week, you had Daniel Bowler, who arguably had you know maybe the worst race of his career. And he was just trying to stay alive. And he got to the point that, you know, he was alive. He was fine. All he had to do was keep running where he was. And we saw him keep pushing, trying harder. He wanted to better that finish. He didn't want to just squeak in. He wanted to make a point to the rest of the guys at the top that he was going for it. It did not matter to him. You know, surviving is one thing. But making a statement and being a name that everyone worries about in the championship is what he wanted to do. That's right. So now next up is Bronco Motorsports. And this was uh, the team that Brad Herman is on that we had TR's Corner with. And one of the things that we learned about uh, Brad Herman, number one, is that he is leading the secondary championship. So we do have a secondary prize pool for those people that didn't make the playoffs uh, that we take their best three races plus the last race. And and we, we get some points for that and we give some money out for that. And so Brad Herman is out front by far on that one. So he has really come on strong here towards the end of the, of the of the season yeah and I, it seems like you know anytime someone posts in the discord or various discords i was like hey you know does anybody want to run so-and-so race 
Brad Herman's one of the first guys that says, hey, I'm down. And it's paying off. You know, he's, he's coming alive. He's making his name known. And, you know, he's, he's being around the sim more than anyone else, which leads to more practice. And practice makes perfect. Yeah, Chris Massey in the 83, uh, 84 of Greg Olnick and the 86 of Brian Crocker. Also three incredible drivers. Chris Massey had actually qualified for the playoffs. He had to bow out uh, as well. But these four guys have really come together. And remember, early in the season, they weren't even a team. Yeah, they were kind of a throw together, so to speak, early. And they've turned that into arguably one of the top cohesive teams in this league now. You know, if, if you look back at some of the teams we've talked about already, Revved Racing, those guys have been together for a while now. Uh, SRN, you know, I, I myself, I'm a part of SRN, same as, you know, Sean is. Those guys have been together for a long time. Uh, Bronco Motorsports, on the other hand, they're a newcomer team, which is what makes them so potent. When you think about them, you know, coming up next season in championship standings, is they're new to each other. The more they gel, the more they grow together, the scarier they're going to be. No, another scary team out there, Tank Racing. These guys, if they get into a group, you are not going to beat them because they feed off of each other. Uh, and so one of their guys, number 33, Devin Zimmerman, is still in the playoffs. Then you have number 46, Mike Lepicki, who last season was absolutely phenomenal. And then the 555 of Derek De Silva, who is one of the most underrated drivers in the entire league. Yeah, and, and you know, when you, you talk about this team, obviously, as you said, you know, you talk about Mike Lepicki, who was two passes away last year from being our season one champion. And of course that went to Danny Dow and we'll get to Danny Dow's team in just a moment. But, you know, Mike Lepicki has, has led those guys. Zimmerman's came a long way. You know, he's learned a lot about the sim. He's kept himself in the playoffs and alive. He has a shot to go out and qualify to race for a championship. And he's another one of this, is another one of those teams, you know, like we talked with steak dance when one succeeds, they all succeed. And that's huge because Zimmerman is very much alive. Next up, we've got Team SRN. So this is kind of our namesake. Speed Racing Network did put together a team, and they're they're right there mid-pack right now. So the number 78 of David Duke, uh, the number 21 of Danny Dow, the number 17 of Danny Setzer, and the number 44 of TR himself, Thomas Rutherford. Yeah, and this, this team, you know, when I look at the teams and I think, you know, solidity, solidity from top to bottom, this is my team. Unfortunately, when I look at that same solidity, I see what this team's been able to accomplish this season, Sean. And it, it really, you know, with one win being Danny Dow, uh, he made the playoffs, but he is not in the championship running anymore. So this this team had so much more that I think they could have done. Watch out for them next season, you know, when everything gets real again across the various different uh, formats that we're going to have and, and series that we're going to have. Some of these jobbers from SRN are going to make their name known again and in a big way. Next up, we got Flashpoint Racing. This is another team that was kind of thrown together mid-season, and they decided to get together because it's just four phenomenal individual racers. Uh, Justin Boyles in the eight, number 66 of Jonathan Byer, the number 62 of Matt Johnson, and the double zero of Marshall Stanley. But, you know, they've got one guy in the playoffs too. Yeah, and, and honestly, you know, when, when you talk about this team, this team is a very, very dangerous team that never lined up. It seemed like, you know, for one reason or another, Sean, you know, you'd have Boyles who had a crazy work schedule and he would miss. And when he could make it, one of their other guys would be out. They never really got to gel hard enough together to really make a full on impact. Justin Boyles, I, I talked with him, you know, relatively a decent amount of time. And we were talking, you know, he just needed one or two more races and he would have been a part of this championship fight that we're seeing now. He didn't miss the playoffs by much. And. Rightfully so, knowing Boyles as well as I do, it's probably a good thing for the guys left that he did not make it because he is a solid, solid eye racer. Yeah, now next up we got the do-gooders. Now this is what we call the fun team. They, they're out there just to have a good time. But make no mistake, they are out there to actually race and, and actually put some points up on the board. Um, we got Corey Knight and Taylor Smith that are in the in the form right now. I uh, don't see Kyle Spees or Brad Yonkman out there. I think I talked to Kyle a little bit earlier and said that he may be here tonight. So, But four fantastic drivers, uh, just not really their year this year. Yeah, and, and one thing's for sure, uh, I know I said it a while back, still stand by at Kyle Spees. If by chance he shows up tonight, I, I look for him to squeak in here at the last, you know, last little while because Las Vegas is Kyle Spees' track. So 
Uh, it would be big to me if he didn't make it because he is a solid, solid race driver. And this is a tough one for him. He's, he's very fast here. H2K Motorsports, another team that really uh, underachieved this year. Uh, just four great drivers for them. Josh Witten, the number 13, number 19 of Justin Kruckman, the number 42 of Duncan Stroska, and the number 88 of Joseph DuPont. Yeah, solid, solid race team, as you said. And honestly, another team on the list that really things could have went better for them this season, but they never gave up. Even now, I'm, you know, they're still running, doing all they can throughout, actually – not sure if we do this might be the first race that we don't have those guys here with us uh maybe one or two of them strung out throughout the field but they've been guys you know that didn't give up they continued to try even when you know it seemed impossible to do anything on a down season and and even when you talk about the highlights you know like joseph dupont at the roval where he was running so solid got taken out contact with a lap car uh just every time they found their stride something silly shut it down well, finally, we got Jam Racing. So only three drivers for them, uh, but the Mike Lewis, number five car, number four of Jay Graves, and the number 96 of Joe Ruggles. Yeah, and honestly, uh, I have to say i got to give more props to Mike Lewis. Uh, we At Mid-South Madness, for those who don't know, we go sometimes and, and we raid hosted sessions together. We'll take four or five, between four of us and ten of us. And uh, last night, Mike Lewis joined us. And we were probably about, it was a 40 lap race. We were probably about 23, 25 laps into it. And, you know, everyone was like, um, I have all kind of incident penalties. And Mike Lewis, not only did he come across the radio and say, you know, I've only got four, which many had been involved in one accident. He said, but I'm also running second. Wow. So Mike Lewis is, is learning this thing and it's starting to get scary because he's primarily a dirt racer and he's coming to life in iRacing Asphalt Oval and he's going to do big things here in the future. Well, let's check out the individual standings now. So we've got eight guys in the playoffs right now. Uh, the other seven guys have been eliminated. Uh, and we'll talk about each and every one of these. But the, the one that sticks out to me is Bobby Brill up front with four wins. Yeah, and honestly, um, I know we talked previously uh, we're here now, Sean, when, when we talked about it, of course, we had a little bit of crunch time in between. Um, when I have to think about guys that have the biggest shot here in making the championship race, the final race, I have to put the two guys, and I know we were talking specifically about Bobby Brill, but the guys one, two, and three right now, I have to say, are my favorites to win this thing. And honestly, that's probably about the order that I would put them in. Well, let's talk about each one of these really quickly. So, so Bobby Brill, uh, man, number one on the track, number one in the standings. He has put on a show during the playoffs with two playoff wins. And so the biggest strength for him, in my opinion, is tires. This guy can save tires like nobody's business. Yeah, I, I had the pleasure of racing with Bobby in a, in a series before he came to Mid-South Madness. And I remember logging on to my computer one day and seeing, you know, that, that Bobby Brill had entered the – uh, entered the discord and I started telling people at that moment, you know, I was like, look, when it comes down to long runs, you better hope we don't have any. Everybody was like, well, you know, why, why, why? I was because man, nobody can save a tire like Bobby Brill. And a lot of guys were like, Oh, you know, just blowing a little bit of smoke. There's no way it's that, you know, that's that crazy. But now after racing and watching Bobby Brill, people are like, man, if it comes down to a tire strategy. Bobby Brill's got us all beat. And I'm like, man, I try to tell you guys, Way back, you know, way back when this thing started, y'all got to capitalize because Bobby Brill can save a tire and flat drive a race car while he's doing it. That's right. The big stat for him, only three finishes outside the top 10. So, I mean, be cautious for that guy. But look at this guy returning from being in the hospital with COVID and double pneumonia, Dean Brummett. And here's the stat that I want to give uh, about him. This guy is one of only two drivers, Bobby Brill being the other, with an average start and an average finish in the top 10. So that means he averages in the top 10 to start and averages in the top 10 to finish. Well, I know we've got some notes about various drivers and, and I'm going to break into that list right now and say that last week ended his string of six top 10 finishes. So I want you guys to realize what that means. And I know a lot of Dean Brummett fans come to the show, whether they watch during or after or periodically, I want you guys to understand that of the 36 to 40 drivers that are here on a weekly basis 
they could not keep this man out of the top 10. It took COVID to take Dean out of the top 10. So he's beyond that now. He's recovering nicely. And that's bad news for the guys on the racetrack because Dean's very much alive. Next up, we got Adam Pettit. So two wins. Like I said before, he's peaking at the right time. This is the perfect time for him. He's an expert on these mile and a half tracks. The biggest strength for him is just pure patience. He just waits for the race to come to him. Sometimes that means he's out front. Sometimes that means he's mid pack, but he doesn't change his strategy for anybody else. Yeah. And, and that's the scary part. You know, it's so easy when you're running at the front, when you qualify up top and you, you know, you're doing your thing and then all of a sudden you're back in traffic and you start panicking a little bit. You're like, Oh no, you know, I've lost three, four five spots. It doesn't matter. 15 cars can pass Adam Pettit and he's still doing his thing. He's still just riding the same race that Adam Pettit started and it works. You know, when you get behind, you know, you're used to clean air, no one being in front of you, not having to live for anyone. And you get behind some cars, you know, that you haven't ran with at each track. It never affects Adam Pettit. He's just still clear cut and going for it. And a justice adjusts his driving style, but never his game plan. Next up, we got Jake Rowell. And Jake, I, if I have to give two words for him, it is just motivation and drive. This guy just wants to go at all times, and he's got two wins on the season. Yeah, and, and anytime you're in a short, you know, a short run scenario, this is the guy you're afraid of. You know, he's he's not as good as some of these other guys at saving tires, just to be frankly honest with you. But bad news about that is on a short run, you don't need to save tires. He's the quickest one in the field. Watch out for Jake Crowell if we get a late race restart. He knows how to get it done quickly. Next up, we got Daniel Bowdler, and Daniel is one of those one of those really consistent drivers. He was fantastic last season as well, and here he is in the playoffs trying to battle his way in. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, he had the absolute worst race possible last season or last week. You know, everything that went wrong could go wrong. I think he powers through tonight, and he finds his way into the championship run. And he's going to do it in a fashion that's very Daniel Bowder-like. Next up, we got Devin Zimmerman. Now, Devin does not have a win on the season, but I really love how consistent he is. He's always somewhere in that mid-pack range just waiting on someone else to make a mistake. Yeah, and, you know, just as you said, he's kind of hanging tough in there, doing his thing, never really lets the race get too far out ahead of him. Even on a bad race, he's continuing, you know, to grip, the concept of where he needs to be furthering moving himself toward the front and eventually he's going to break through and take all kind of wins yeah his biggest strength is sneakiness because he's always in that mid pack and then all of a sudden he's right on your bumper for first place next up we got aaron gerwitz and aaron is one of those that just practices 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 with rev racing practice makes perfect that's his biggest strength yeah and honestly it's a it's a scary scary strength for the rest of these guys you know I've, like I said, got to know Aaron Gerwitz more and more here over the last few weeks. And I think he's he's got a point to be made here in the next couple of races uh, tonight and next week at Auto Club where I feel that, you know, he might not have had a good early season, but he's going to have a darn good end of the season. Last but certainly not least, Matt Johnson, and he has been the one that really just lets other people make mistakes. I mean, kind of like the Iceman in Top Gun, or you know, so he just kind of lets everybody else do their thing. And his biggest strength to me is he zigs when they zag. So when everybody else is doing one thing, that's when he does something else, and that's what makes him succeed. Yeah, and honestly, you know, when when I start thinking about uh, Matt Johnson, you're right. You know, he's he's kind of He's, he's been that guy that's just let the season come to him. He's never put himself in a weird spot. He's never done anything he wasn't comfortable with. However, tonight, I think he's got to flip the script. He's got to be a total different Matt Johnson. He's got to go out and get it tonight. Too many guys are going to get eliminated to sit back and wait and see what happens. All right, let's go out to the track right now. So qualifying is over. We got Daniel Bowdler out front on the pole, then Devin Zimmerman there in second third place we're gonna have jay graves the front man for jam racing taking up the one of the top spots and then fourth place jake Rowell. fifth place we got brad herman himself uh who we spoke to on tr's corner sixth place brandon key from rev racing seventh place my man bobby braille eighth place danny dow 
Number nine, Jacob Smith from Striker Motorsports. And Brian O'Shell comes in the 10th position as an independent. 11th place, David Duke having a solid, solid start. And Dean Brummett, COVID man himself, is going to start it out in 12th position. All right, so we got a lot of great drivers up there. We're just waiting on the pace car to do its thing. But while we're waiting on that, let's say thank you to our sponsors, CMC Fabrication. They uh, they fabricated the, the best truck at Talladega last season. Uh, so if you have any fabrication needs from... Uh, from an actual race car all the way up to or all the way down to a race rig, whatever it is, CMC Fabrication are your guys. Dent Wizard, the the leaders in paintless dent repair. So if you have any dents, and some of these guys will at the end of this race, go see Dent Wizard. Brookstone Animal Hospital for man's best friend. Find the best vets at Brookstone Animal Hospital. Silverback Tax Solutions. If the IRS is on your back, get that monkey off your back with Silverback Tax Solutions. Paints by Night, the leaders in painting on iRacing. If you have any paint needs, go to speedracingnetwork.com and order your paint from Paints by Night. Griffith CPA Firm, making taxes less taxing since 1986. And finally, Steak Dance Seasoning. Add a little seasoning to your life. Make your taste buds dance with Steak Dance Seasoning. All right, Brandon, we are finally here. It is time. We're going to have some fun yeah and it's it's go time now for a lot of these guys they just rolled off the line it just became real that this could be it and it will be for three of these drivers three of these drivers are running their final regular season championship or sorry championship playoff race in season two of mid-south madness sean and it's about to get crazy it's about to get real. I'll tell you right now, I just got a text from Corey Knight, who is supposed to be in this race, and he said that his breaker just tripped at his house. And so he is going to go flip that breaker and get back on, but he'll already be a lap down once they get started. <laughs> yeah, I see that he just threw put it there. And real quickly, Sean, the pace car headed down to turn number three. I've got to ask, who are you picking tonight? Man, it's really, really tough for me, but I think this is going to be a victorious return for Dean Brummett. Well, I tell you what, you know, I'm, I'm not straying too close from the good friend group that they have. I'm taking number nine, JFR, Jake Roel. We're going to find out very shortly. It's going to be some gambling fun here tonight at Las Vegas Motor Speedway with the Hold'em or Fold'em 150 as Daniel Bowler will get us started with the green flag, and he takes off and gets a little bit of distance. Yeah, that was an excellent, excellent restart for Daniel Bowler, who's trying to just get away from everyone else. That's his strategy, Sean, to get out front, to get gone, and not worry about, you know, any of the chaos and close racing, which there's a lot of right now in positions two through seven. They're door-to-door, side-by-side from second back to seventh. As Dean Brummett tries to cut into the battle now, charging from behind. Zimmerman, for the moment, going to pull into second place, leaving third through seventh, still in a hornet's nest. Yeah, it looks like Jake Roel is going to come up in third place there. Then you have Jay Graves, who we didn't really talk about too much. He's a very, very consistent driver uh, for Jam Racing back there in uh, fifth place. He's got Danny Dow on his outside for, for uh, Team SRN. Yeah, and, you know, you just you talk about this front group of guys here and you look at the three different styles of the front three where you have Daniel Bowdler who tries to be a little bit of everything you need to be in iRacing. You know, he needs to be fast at times. He needs to be conservative at times. And he needs, you know, he, he tries his hardest to do that. And it's paid off for him. Then you look behind him and it's going to change up the order I was going to go in because as Jake Roel makes the pass for second place, you have Jake Roel who is just in go mode constantly, always on the charge, always on the surge, trying to get and be the front man in the race. And then you have Devin Zimmerman in third place, who really doesn't push the issue, just tries to let the race come to him. He drives his race car, and that's all he's worried about. He's not worried about passing this guy or that guy. He's not worried about you know his fastest lap, uh, how long he can run on fuel. He just wants to hang back and see what happens. And that is your front three right now in three total different racing personalities, Sean. Absolutely, and we're going to see who who uh, whose strategy pays off the most. I think the front seven have basically kind of uh, 
gotten single file. So we're going to jump back here to ninth and 10th place, I believe, uh, with Bobby Brill himself holding that ninth position. But you got Brandon Smith and David Duke tracking him down. Yeah, and, and David Duke, man, such a solid, solid driver. One of my favorite guys in all of iRacing. He just never quits. You know, he former crew chief. He'll get you where you need to go. And honestly, if I was to take one guy from the entire Mid-South Madness League that I wanted always on my team, it'd be David Duke. Because, you know, you, you get into that racing, you get a little bit of contact, you get fired up, you get mad, and you've got David Duke that says, hey, man, calm down. Just drive the race car. It's not that bad. Get a little bit of damage, and you're down on power. And he says, hey, man. Just drive the race car. It's not that bad. Or you're a little bit out on, on race strategy. Don't know what you need to do. David Deuce, that guy that said, hey, you can go two more laps. You can make it to the end. Let's play the strategy. Go three more laps than everybody else. We'll have three lap new, you know, newer tires. That is the guy, man. He's he's one of the, the greatest guys in this league. And his season's been a little bit rough. But I think he's got big things coming. Absolutely, and I misspoke. That is not Brandon Smith. That is Jacob Smith in the number 15 car. So I apologize for that, Jacob. Uh, but, yeah, Jacob Smith for Striker Motorsports doing a great job up there. Let's check in up at the front as Daniel Bowler still way out front, about four-tenths of a second ahead already. Jake Rowell trying to track him down. But as this gets further and further into this run, I think Jake Rowell is going to fall back some. Well, the one thing that I was about to touch on was quite the opposite. I think right now the worst person behind Daniel Bowdler is Jake Rowell. And the reason I say that is because you see right now Jake's getting so much bigger in Daniel's mirror, which means Daniel's pushing that car so much harder than he needs to right now. And they're both going to blow their tires off of the race car. And then the guys sitting third, fourth, and fifth are going to capitalize the biggest with right now. Man trying to poke his way into third, Danny Dow put down all kind of practice laps this week, and he's about to get crazy and wild trying to win at Las Vegas. And let's take a look at Danny Dow. So he is back there in fourth position right now, right behind Devin Zimmerman, who is a playoff driver. Now, Danny had a bow out of the playoffs last week. Uh, he decided to go and watch his son, Troy Dow, uh, race in real life, which, hey, great father, man. That's the way to do things. Uh, the I racing is fun. We love it. We have a great time with it. But uh, family comes first. Great father, great friend, uh, good guy, man. Yeah, he's you know all of the guys in this league. Don't, don't get me wrong. You know, there's there's not one guy that I can pinpoint and say, hey, he's probably the worst guy in here. But I mean, just so many great, great guys around the league that are, my hats are off to them because they have their priorities perfectly straight and they still drive a fast race car while their priorities are straight. And, that takes a lot, John. Absolutely. I mean, you got to prioritize things. But, man, if you can get out here and race with Mid-South Madness, it is a lot of fun to do. No doubt about that. Probably one of my top two. Yeah, probably my top two favorite leagues that I've ran overall, you know, as a whole from start to finish. Of course, oh, there's going to be contact back in the field. Chad Wampler, Chris Massey, but they're okay. They gathered it up. A little bit of bumping elbows there as they come off a of turn four. But, you know, as with every league, Mid-South Madness has its highs and lows. But this has been a solid, solid league for two seasons now. And honestly, Sean, I'm a little sad to see season two coming to a close. It's come to a close, but man, season three is going to be insane. We, we're, we're creating a whole new series. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun, but uh, and we'll see where some of these drivers shake out. Some of these drivers are going to move up to the cup cars. Some of them are going to stay here in Xfinity. Some of them are going to go down to the trucks. And so uh, we're, we'll see where everybody shakes out, but make no mistake, we are going to run a fantastic series of leagues next season. Yeah, and honestly, that's the crazy part is, you know, they've spent – uh, 16 races so far getting used to one another and how each other races and some of these guys may not race together next season all obviously hopefully still under the mid-south madness and srn banner they're you know still core group of guys but different series across the board and sean there's so many opportunities where realistically you know with that many series series running at one time we could even throw together, you know, like a, an all-star race where we take the best from the trucks, the best from the Xfinity, the best from the Cup, throw them all into one common car, maybe the ARCA car. We're not running an ARCA series. You know, put everybody on an even playing field and get the band back together, so to speak. So, so many opportunities uh, coming this 
you know, this coming season in season three, and it's going to be wild for Mid South Madness. Definitely come and join us if you're an I racer out there and you're watching us. Definitely come and join us. We'll talk a little bit more about those series uh, a little bit later on today uh, during this race. If if we ever get a caution, we'll talk a little bit more about it. But right now, drivers out there keeping it really clean. Yeah, honestly, you know, me and uh, myself and Bowler were talking pre-race, and you know, he said, "I feel like it, it's not going to go green that often." And for the moment. We were about 14 laps in, and that's what he was talking about. He said, after seven or eight laps, we're going to be so spread out that it's, you know, it's not even funny. So I was wrong in saying that it wasn't going to be a green flag, you know, or a caution fest is what I, you know, sort of expected with the way this car handles here and so many cars. But at the same time, you know, when Bowler said we'll be so spread out that it won't matter, he was a little bit off on that too because you see the front seven, eight cars still within two seconds of each other. Yeah, but Daniel Bowler has opened up a seven-tenths of a second lead on Jake Rowell, so uh, he is starting to pull away just a little bit. Those tires are starting to give out. Now, I do want to go back just a little bit. So we've got Bobby Brill, who was up in seventh position. He is all the way back to 17th. Not really sure what happened to Bobby. Keynote on Bobby Brill. Good news for other drivers, bad news for Bobby Brill. He bought this track yesterday, so... Not a lot of practice, but at the same time, one of the fastest learners in Mid-South Madness. So be glad that Bobby's down for the moment. But by the end of this 100 laps, Bobby will have learned this racetrack, and he'll be charging back to the front. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, the, our biggest mover forward right now is Aaron Gerwitz from Rev Racing. So we talked about him peaking at the right moment, and here he is. He's up nine positions from where he started. Yeah, and, and, you know, I, like I said, I've been talking a lot with Gerwitz and, you know, hanging out with him in the Discord, just, you know, shooting the breeze, if you will. And he said he's not going to sleep on this opportunity to go race for a championship. He wants to be what, you know, he expected all season, what we expected Rev Racing to be, more so than just Adam Pettit. He wants to share that torch and run for a championship next week at Auto Club. And that's where it's going to get a little scary because he's doing that right now. Back up front, Daniel Bowler has opened it up to 1.3 seconds now, so he is just pulling away. Danny Dow, though, is going to take third position away from uh, from Brandon Key here. So on the outside, at least, ah, Brandon's not giving it up too easily. Well, the bad news for Bowler is one of the faster cars on the racetrack is holed up behind these two right here, battling side-by-side side. Dean Brummett has been all over the back bumper the last couple of laps of both the 11 and the 21. If he can just find a hole to get around these guys, I think he'll charge up, maybe pass uh, Jake Roel in second place and go after the man out front. He's just searching for that line right now, and the longer they run side by side, the further Bowler gets away from him. Yeah, you can see him moving back and forth, trying to figure out which guy to follow. But right now, Danny Dow and Brandon Key are pretty well evenly matched. So uh, Dean's just got to kind of be a little bit patient as we round out to top or to uh, lap number 20. Yeah, and speaking of lap number 20, I'm going to give you guys periodic updates throughout the playoffs of who's in, who's out as they run. Right now, just looking down, I believe – Going to let the standings continue to tick on through, but I believe... I oh, three wide, Brandon Key! And there's contact. Everyone's going to save it, maybe. Beautiful save. Oh, no, oh, now now we got some more action. David, David Duke through the infield. Still Will green. It. Will in it. He's coming across the track, locks it down. That will likely... Bring out our first caution, maybe. No, no there it is. There is the first caution. Okay, so so a little bit of, uh, of action that started there with Dean Brummett taking it three wide into a corner. And so we will go to our first rec replay of the night. And we're going to back it up some because a lot of action happened here. And we're going to start it off with Dean Brummett. And so Dean's going to bring it three wide into this corner right there and then uh, Brandon Key gets a little little loose and then that goes up and tags Brad Herman now if we back it up just a little bit then we're going to see Brad Herman kind of uh, kind of a little bit slow and then that's where you see David Duke going through the infield we will go back and take a look one more time with the David Duke part 
Oh, David Duke got it up into Jay Graves is what happened there. Yeah, it looked like just a little bit of uh, room losing. You know, uh, I don't know a better way to, to stay that or say that there. You know, it looked like they ran out of room. So many guys so close together, old tires, uh, just trying to find trying to find a groove to run in. And, you know, you, you saw it back before the incident where Duke got sideways. Guys getting a little bit desperate there. Look like Danny tagged Brandon Key. Brandon Key's going to tag Brad Herman. But, you know, Dean Brumman had to go for it there. He was losing too much time to the leader and decided, hey, that was the opportunity. There you see Jay Graves, same kind of manner. These cars are so front end loose when the tires get old that just little contact like that will send you around, Sean. Definitely. And so we are under caution. And everybody is pitting, trying to get those new tires. Not a single person stayed out there on the track, I don't believe. If they did, they have to be psycho to, you know, want to wrestle that car around with the tires the way they were. Unless, you know, maybe somebody's going for a little bit of a, a strategy on how they're going to come out of this thing on top. But I just think 23 laps, 22 laps under green is just too long to wait, you know, and say, hey, we're going to go one more run. Well, just taking a look, Daniel Bowler beat everybody off of pit road. So he has led pretty much every lap of this race so far. But look at Dean Brummett coming back from COVID, coming back from double pneumonia. Last week had a really uh, awful race, in his opinion, snapped a, a six race streak of being in the top 10. Uh, I'm just super weak after the race. I mean, just really, really uh, a rough week for him. Glad he's feeling better. But on his comeback tour here at Las Vegas, he is up in second place. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's got to get a little bit scary now for Daniel Bowler because obviously Dean matched his pace early in the run and was matching his pace later in the run, but he was trapped in traffic. This time, Bowler's not going to have that same, you know, he's not going to have that same cushion this time, Sean. When they go back green flag racing, they're going to be side by side, so... Daniel's still got to, you know, hope he didn't get too complacent out in the lead. He's got to focus back in, trying to keep that 25 at bay. But you don't want to put yourself in a bad spot either because right now you both transfer to the championship round. So we'll see what happens here. All right, and once again, let's jump back in while we've still got another lap of caution. And let's talk about the Virtual Series. So Speed Racing Network Virtual Series, this is uh, basically the next season of this league. And so we've decided to go three different leagues. So we're going to go Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and the Cup Series. Different ratings for each, different price points for each, but all of them are going to run the same 20-week schedule. And so what that allows us to do, Brandon, is if you win in the Truck Series, we're going to give you a free entry into the the Xfinity series that week so you can run on the same exact track but a different car different group of people yeah and honestly I've, I've been in a I ran a season one of a league that ran this same kind of scheme where you know it, it was a little bit different but um, you know when you talk about like my I rating right now my I rating qualifies for two of the three uh, really close on qualifying for the cup series so let's let's say you know I, I hit 2,000 exact I rating I can run in all three series that means, you know, I can run in Daytona in the trucks. And then if I can win or, or even if, you know, even if I just decide to run in the Xfinity series, just, you know, just for fun, uh, then I can go and race Daytona in the Xfinity series the next night. A couple nights later, I can go do it in the Cup series. So you have that even playing field of you don't have to learn three tracks a week if you choose. Now, of course, you can only run for points in one of them, the way I understand it. But... You know, if you decide to run in all three, maybe for the payments or things like that, depending on slots and availability, uh, the track's all the same. So there's one track, three different cars versus three tracks and three different cars. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I think it'll be a lot of fun. The other series that we're running is the S-Rock Series, so the Speed Racing Open Cup Series. So for those drivers that like those open setups, we're going to run a series for them as well. So $10 a week on that one. It's going to be 18 weeks. It's going to really follow the NASCAR schedule closely. A couple races we have to change just for scheduling purposes, but 75% distance races, long races, but $500 first place for that one as we're about to get back to green flag racing. Yeah, and that S-Rock series is going to be a lot of guys gunning to get it in that series, and that's where it's going to be 
crazy and wild next season. That's the, the series that I don't know that I'm quite ready to run yet. So hopefully be on call for that series and get a call all the action. But Daniel Bowdler taking us back. Green flag race in lap number 25 coming to 26. We're off himself. Dean Drummond, Jake Roel, Devin Zimmerman, the top four all playoff drivers trying to steal the win and the momentum is Bobby Brill further back in the pack trying to use the outside line. Gonna get the door shut by Sean Dice. So these playoff guys know it's go time with four of the front five being playoff drivers. It leaves one spot for the rest of the guys not up in the front right now. You got eight guys coming in, five guys head out, and four of them are out front. Well, during the practice a little bit earlier this evening, Dean Brummett ran the fastest lap during that practice. And so he is out there trying to make it work now. And, you know, running the fastest lap and passing a guy that is running fast also are two completely different things. Yeah, and honestly, you know, it's it's so easy. It's so easy to go out and just, you know, for instance, uh, Mike Lepicki, great driver. He's driving the number 46 Hooters car here somewhere in the field. Uh, excellent, excellent driver. He worked at... You know, he ran his butt off last night working on long runs and pitch strategy and what he was going to do. And he ran a 37-1-0. Uh, we do have a caution on the racetrack. I'll finish up this thought and we'll check it out with our Dit Wizard Rec replay. I think it involved Mike Lewis there. But, um, you know, he, he was working on those long runs. I went in, ran two laps, ran a 635 and bounced out. Uh, so it's easy to run a fast lap. But I guarantee you that if I was out here racing with Mike Lepicki just with the practice that he has, he would blow my doors off because he practiced more than just a fast lap. So realistically, fast laps, Sean, they don't mean a whole lot. It's really what you can do over the course of a long run that matters. Well, let's take a look at this rec replay. I believe you're right. I believe it involved Mike Lewis and Brian Crocker. Uh, both of them were off the track there for a while. So let's take a look and see what happens here. And so as they're coming around... Mike Lewis, Brian Crocker, just bumper to bumper here. Mike gets down on the apron. Once he gets down on the apron, he starts to spin a little bit, and then that does not help anybody. So uh, you got Brian Crocker out there in the grass as well as Mike Lewis, and that's what brought out our caution. Yeah, still running that paint scheme, the Halloween paint scheme for Brian Crocker there as we see it. I will tell you, just got a text from my mother-in-law. This is how, things, how fast things change in West Virginia. It changed just as fast in the race, but last night, you know, it was Halloween. It was full fall mode. Tonight, it's snowing outside, so things change quick in real life, and they're going to change even quicker in this race, Sean. And you can see some pit games being played there where some people were saying, oh, I'm going to come in, I'm going to come in, and then diving right back off. So only eight laps uh, on those tires since they last pitted, and about four of those have been under caution. So not too much wear and tear on those. Uh, if you're in the back of the pack, sure, come on in and get some tires. Uh, but if you're up front, then nah, no, no reason to risk the, the uh, position out on the track. I'll tell you what, if, if I'm, you know, just look at Adam Pettit, Matt Johnson, Bobby Brill, the guys back in the championship running right now. I think I would have come to pit road there, and yeah, it'd have put you behind. But you know, when you look about five, six, seven, maybe laps by the time we go green here, you'd have more on fuel and tires. That's seven more laps you can go on fuel. Let's say that we retake the green here on lap 32, and we go to the end. No more cautions. That five, six, seven. Laps of fuel that you could have had that you could have took right here could be the difference in making the championship and not, Chuck. Huh? Yeah, and I'm not sure if they're thinking that maybe we're going to get more and more cautions as, as we get bunched up again uh, under caution like we are right now. But uh, lots of differing strategies are going to come to play eventually. But right now, everybody on the same strategy. And those top eight, uh, those playoff top eight are all in the top 12 on the track. So uh, really cream rising to the top here. Yeah, and I mean, you know, if, if you guys checked out the actual NASCAR race earlier today, you know, you, you look at, like, for instance, what Alex Bowman did. You know, Alex Bowman was in a must-win situation, and, you know, he, he was running third place most of the race, but it just wasn't enough. You know, and that's what some of these drivers are going to feel here, where, you know, right now, if you look at the top five, I think Pettit's going to be one of the first guys out. He's in eighth place. Right now, if the race ended in eighth place, Adam Pettit would be out. 
However, at eighth place is an excellent finish. It's still in the money for Mid-South Madness. But just as Sean said, the creams rise to the top. you got to do more than that, and that's the crazy part about it is eighth place, while most nights is a great night, right now it's just not enough, Sean. No, not enough at all. But uh, but we're going to find out what happens here pretty shortly. Now, we do this for fun, obviously, but we also do this for money here. And so let's go through the Griffith CPA firm season payouts. So uh, Paints by Night is sponsoring a do-gooders safe driver award. So if you are the safest driver in the league, meaning the least amount of incident points, then you're going to get $50. Brookstone Animal Hospital has sponsored a Man's Best Friend Award, so that award goes to the guy that is just the guy that would help you out no matter what. Doesn't have to be a great driver on the track, but the guy in the league that that's your best friend. Uh, so they'll get $50 plus $25 to the charity of their choice. Then Steak Dance has sponsored the Risk It for the Brisket Team Championship, so the top team will win $200, and they can split that up. And then the season-long grand champion will get $500, Brandon. Yeah, and honestly, that is so much money. And I'm not going to put anyone's business out there, Sean, but I'm sure you're going to know who I'm talking about. But just for for insight, if the season ends the way we expect it to, there is one specific driver that is going to net at least $600. Now, of course, different things go into that as far as you know the money itself, but one driver right now has the opportunity to capture six hundred dollars yes a couple different awards but that's that's how much money one person can walk out of here with if the things go right the next couple of weeks definitely a lot of money on the line there's going to be even more on the line next season and so definitely come and join us out in the chat bruce amsden uh saying that that he likes the plan of the uh of the races or all, of all the series out there and we appreciate that bruce we hope you come and join us uh really we have a great time uh one of the best parts about this league and brandon you can correct me if i'm wrong here but i think you'll agree our discord channel is the most fun of any of them because we we're all re very respectful of each other but man we just like each other i mean it's a great league good guys in it yeah I, I find actually let me touch on that here in just a second i'll get right back to that thought because we're going back to racing here the same front row the same second row daniel bowler is off back in control of this thing he's led every lap so far and he wants to lead about 66 more of them before the end of this thing 67 more of them Maybe 68. I cannot math, but you know, they're going to get single file first through about eighth right now, ninth place. But as he was saying, you know, there's, there's no tolerance for the silly stuff said in the Discord, and that's my favorite thing. I get a little bit sad, Sean, when I'm like, hey, you know, I want to go race. Just go see who's in the Discord, and no one's in the Discord. You know, no one's hanging out in the general chat. I get a little bit sad. I'll shoot a message, say, hey, you know, who wants to raid some hosted lobbies? Let's go race together as a big group. Doesn't matter your eye rating at that point. You, know, you could have an 800 I rating. You could have a 4,000 I rating. We're all just out there doing our thing together in a hosted lobby. And that's you know that's where I find my most fun. But I tell you, somebody who's having fun right now, that 25 car, Dean Brumman, he's trying to take this lead away from Daniel Bowler. Yeah, and notice he got down to that corner. Daniel Bowler did not let up at all. So right there on that back quarter panel, that right side of quarter panel, uh, he is not letting Dean have a single inch. And then Jake Rowell trying to take advantage of Dean pushing through, trying to push his former teammate up through that, that spot so that he can take that second place spot as well. Yeah, and honestly, I, I like I like the you know, defensive driving of Bowler there, but at the same time, I absolutely hate it. And again, I know I try to poke my nose at a crew chief opportunity here and there. If I was Daniel Bowler's crew chief, I'd have told him, man, just let him go. Because if Dean would have overstepped his groove, pushed up and just tapped that left front of Daniel Bowler, he'd have been in the wall and it would have been a long battle back to the front for Daniel Bowler because who knows what would have happened. Uh, that was very, you know, very defensive driving and, and Dean's to the point, you know, in his iRacing career that he was able to hold it down there. But, man, just one slip could have ruined the night for the sixth car. Well, you know, the fun thing with Daniel Bowler, and, and one of the things that I've noticed about him, he doesn't have it in him to be back in the pack. The reason that he likes to be up front is he likes to avoid all the wrecks that are behind him. If you're in first place, you're not wrecking. And so he, he really likes being up front. But, man, you saw how close he got to that wall there. Yeah, and honestly, I don't know how much he could have squeezed in between that six car and the wall there. He's pushing ever so hard for the same reason you were talking about. 
He's not only back to second now, but that nine car is filling his mirror full on its second spot. And the bad news for Daniel Bowler is Jake Rowell has been faster than Daniel Bowler on the short run. Now, of course, Bowler was much faster on the long run, but that's where Daniel's got to get out of his head a little bit and just let Jake go. Don't burn your tires up trying to keep him behind you because now there's a 25 car out in your front windshield that's just taking off and leaving you. So uh, just let Jake go for now. Jake will burn those tires up, and you'll be back around him because if you, you fool around too long and you battle for it, Another playoff driver back there in fourth position trying to make his way back into the battle. Well, Brandon, as they're starting to kind of get spread out a little bit out there, let's go and do our mole hole cams brought to you by Brookstone Animal Hospital. Let's see how we're doing with these mole hole cams as they're coming around this turn. You can see them coming into your screen, and they are gone. This is one of my favorite cameras in all of iRace. This, that shot right there, man, just when they don't quite hit it, you could just see them flash by. You could see how low the splitter is, you know, to the racetrack. They're just so connected. And, man, it's getting crazy for second there. Those boys trust each other so much. Oh, a little bit of contact. Sound like Devin Zimmerman, but I could not. It might have been Adam Pettit, actually, maybe getting into someone a little bit there. But they continue on. Still under green. As we go back live here, so we've got Dean Brummett out there at about 35 hundredths of a second ahead, so uh, not too terribly far ahead. Daniel Bowler holding down that second position, but Jake Rowell, look how close he's getting. He is right on that bumper. Yeah, and I think at this point he's, he's dead. That's what I expected there. I was going to say, I think Jake's just trying to make a point to Bowler. You know, hey, we're both in the championship. I'm faster right now. It doesn't mean I'm going to stay faster. Oh! oh now they're trying that defensive driving. That's going to end terribly for one of these cars. They're not careful. That's that's the type of, you know, temper elevation that you're going to start to see is, you know, these guys are both in a transfer spot. They're both right now going to move on to race next Sunday for $500. And, Getting so close. Here comes that fourth place car, Devin Zimmerman, back into the action. But even with the battle, Sean, it's only about a half a second from, you know, fourth, third place. And it's about a little more than that now, but from third place up to the leader, Dean Brummett. And these top four have just really broken away. So a couple seconds ahead of fifth place, Jacob Smith. And so, really, a great top four here. I mean, these guys, they've been battling all season long. Devin Zimmerman, if I had to make one surprise up here, it's probably him. He's usually a little bit closer to, you know, 10th to 12th place at, at this point in the race. And he waits a little bit longer for the race to go on before he makes his move. Yeah, and that goes back to, you know, what we were talking about pre-race. Some of these guys, you know, like the Devin Zimmermans, like the Matt Johnsons, they've got to go out and get it. They can't wait for it to come to them because with just 100 laps, could be too late to come to you you know so Zimmerman's capitalizing on that very very well now unfortunately oh Bobby Brill not sure what happened there he's down on the apron oh he's gonna get ooh, so close back to man they're all over Bobby Brill he just cannot find the fast lane yet Oh, he needs to find it quickly because he is the eighth place driver in the playoffs right now. He's in 21st position, and the next driver ahead of him is in the eighth position. So the top eight, seven of them are our playoff drivers. Yeah, I was just listening to the driver chat there. Bobby sounded like he got a little bit turned sideways, went down on the apron, and slid back up. Luckily... The man himself, Danny Setzer, was able to give Bobby Brill some room without causing too much damage. Just, the guy's comfortable in their playoff run. Talking about the Cowboys-Eagles game going on right now. So I didn't catch whose voice that was, but I heard it prefaced with a, we're racing for a championship, and then followed, but what's the score? So uh, <laughs> very reminiscent, Sean, back to the IVCS. I wish I would have caught who that was, because you remember back when I think it was Kentucky, at, you know, the Justin, the Justin Boyles, finals. that's right. Justin Boyles wasn't worried about that race. He was worried about them Celtics and how they were playing. So somebody out here is a little bit comfortable in their race car, and I wish I would have gone who that was. Not sure. I know Danny Dow is a huge Cowboys fan, but he's not in the playoffs anymore. So, so I'm not really sure who that could have been. But I'll tell you, here's the crazy part. Five of the top six 
uh, are playoff drivers, and they currently are slotted into the playoffs or into the championship next week. In seventh and eighth position is Adam Pettit and Aaron Gerwitz. If the race ended right now, they would come in seventh and eighth place on the track, and the, but they would be eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah, and honestly, you know, I just look at some of the driving up here. And, you know, I, you look at the lead where, you know, Bowler's back up to the lead. I, I don't worry too much about those two drivers, Dean and uh, Daniel himself. But if you look at the two guys behind them, you know, you've got Jake Crowell and you've got Devin Zimmerman. These guys here, their tempers and their driving styles kind of clash a little bit, Sean. So uh, right now they're both in transfer spots. I, I saw a couple laps ago. Daniel Bowler going to take the lead away. Dean going for the crossover, not wanting it to slip away yet. But I will say, you know, when you talk about that battle for third, Devin put a mean slide job on Jake Crowell, and that's something that you remember. You know, same as Kevin Harvick had to do off the final turn tonight. When you got to try to get in, you got to try to get in. You know, that bump that you might not have gave to the guy before, start throwing sliders around like that, you might have to give back to him later. So we'll see. These guys are going to get desperate here in just a little while. Yeah, Dean Brummett just lets Daniel Bowler go by. Uh, he is a very, very smart driver. Uh, he knows all he has to do is come into the top five of these playoff drivers, and he makes it through to next round. And that's his goal. If you make it through to next round, you make money because that's the top five get paid out. So, so yes, it's fun to win the race, but if it comes down to you winning the race or defending your position uh, or defending your position to win the race and possibly wrecking out or just living to fight another day, live to fight another day all day yeah, long. And honestly, that's that's the two big personality difference between the two on your screen right now. You know, just as you said, Dean does not care. Dean could watch Daniel Bowler drive a lap ahead of him, and Dean does not care right now. He's second on the racetrack, and no matter what, that means he's in the next round. Daniel Bowler, however... If he's going to qualify, he wants to qualify where he's at. He wants to win the thing and qualify. He wants to be number one. So hopefully, in Daniel's defense, it doesn't come back to bite him because I like that a lot about Daniel. But as you said, sometimes you have to bow down and live to fight another day. Just going back through uh, through the list here, let's go back to Bobby Brill. So back in 20th position, still trying to figure this track out. Like you said, he just bought the track yesterday, so trying to find some room out there. And he's going to need something to happen as we're still under green at lap 51. And uh, as people get more and more spread out, it's going to be tougher to make these passes. Yeah, and honestly, you know, you, you talk about, again, you know, to touch back on the actual NASCAR series, you know, um, winning his driver, Sean, of the season. Kevin Harvick, nine wins, did not make the championship four. Our winning his driver, Bobby Brill, with four wins, struggling right now to try to make that final round. So, you know, could get a little bit wavy. We're going back up front, and it looks like that was Travis Trevilian going into the pits right now. But Daniel Bowler still holding that lead on Dean Brummett. Devin Zimmerman still holding that lead on Jacob Smith. Oh, I'm sorry, on Jake Rowell. So Jake, Jacob Smith has decided to poke his nose into this. Jacob Smith moves up into the fourth position. Now he's going to move up to third by passing Devin Zimmerman. So oh, I'm sorry, yeah, to third by passing De Devin Zimmerman. So uh, Jacob Smith coming alive here towards the end of this tire run. That's, that's what you have to start to worry about. That's the car that I would, you know, if we had the, the capability to circle the race car right now, I'm going to circle the 15. And the reason is you saw how hard Daniel has ran the guys that get close to him. Now, they're all in the playoffs. That's one thing. That 15 car on your screen right now, he's catching both Dean Brummett and Daniel Bowler. When he gets to Daniel, Daniel cannot afford to put himself in a spot where he even remotely tries to battle Jacob Smith. Yeah, you're going to lose some money. You might lose a raise. But I promise you the money you're going to win in this race ain't nothing on the money you're going to win next week. So uh, these guys got to be careful. I saw Jay. I saw uh, Jacob pass Jake. Easy pass. Saw him go past Zimmerman, Zimmerman let him go. Zimmerman's not worried about that 15 car. His name's in black at the top of the screen. He's not running for this championship. So that's that's the big one key. One thing I do want to touch on, um, first and foremost, I want to preface it with the fact that, uh, you know, Sean puts in so, so much work to the broadcast features that you see on your screen. The one thing that I do want to highlight, though, Danny Dow's name is still green. He is not racing for the championship. And Sean... 
Don't even worry about it, man. Things happen. I just pointed out so no one gets confused. We'll get it fixed for you next week. It's not, you know, it's not that big a deal, but I didn't want it to confuse anyone out watching the race. Uh, you know, I, I think I heard somebody say that they land a thousand planes and they never crash, but the one time they crash, that's the time that everybody remembers. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's why I knew, I knew there'd be someone along the way say, hey, you know, Dow's name is Green. He's not. I wanted to point it out as a broadcast. Mm -hmm. oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. it. Oh, Devin Zimmerman! All kind of contact between Jake Crowell, Devin Zimmerman, and Matt Johnson. Three playoff drivers in the man in the middle. Uh, Adam Pettit unscathed by John, so damage to the 33, to the 62, and the 9. So lots of playoff drivers in this cluster right here, and one of those playoff drivers will be going home. So right now it's Aaron Gerwitz in the 0-9. He's got to pass somebody. So uh, Devin Zimmerman is up, and now he passes Devin Zimmerman there. So, so right now Devin Zimmerman is on the outside looking in if we were in the race right now. This is how tight this is, Brandon. This is crazy. Yeah, and if you look right there, you know, exclude exclude the four car, the orange one, the 33, 09, the 57, and the 9, all playoff drivers. The bad news is there's two playoff drivers ahead of them. So those four are still, as you said, three of them will transfer, one of them will not, and the other car, oh, someone hard into the wall. Jake Rowell, oh, he saved it. Now Jake Rowell going to be the man out of the playoffs for the moment. So it's getting wild. Over it is. Halfway done. It's getting insane. I know we have at least one more pit stop to go, possibly only one more if we go green the entire way. And so you've got to start thinking, do I want to play pit strategy here or do I need to get back further up? Well, the bad news for Zimmerman and Jake Rowell, their cars continue to fade out of the battle. The tires look like they've gone away on the 0-9, but right now he can't afford to fight with the four car because the four car is not racing, and actually the three cars behind Gerwitz are not racing for a championship. Uh, so you see those tires. He's not as fast as the cars behind him. Jay Graves being very, very patient with Aaron Gerwitz. Is Adam Pettit out front of him? A couple of playoff drivers there, but some of these non-playoff drivers starting to get a little bit faster. And uh, Sean, don't look now, but that 15 car is about to catch second place. Yes, he is. And here we go. These two are teammates. So they're going to race each other nicely. But Jacob Smith has no problem passing Dean Brummett. And there he goes. And Dean Brummett will just let him go. I mean, they're teammates. They're not going to they're not going to wreck each other or anything like that. And Dean knows that he's faster right now. So uh, so go ahead and let him go. I'll tell you out there in the chat at well 344 says go baby go. Atwell, I don't know who that is for. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's for one of the playoff drivers, but let us know who that's I'm for so we can mistaken. let them know. I would bet money on the fact that that's for Dean Brummett. I think I, I don't want to butcher it. I've never actually met her, but I think it's Chelsea. I think that's who it is. I cannot remember, but I think that's going to be a Dean Brummett supporter show. Oh, man, he is out there. He's doing a great job right now. Uh, again, prime position to move on to next week as long as he keeps it going straight right now, which is he's doing just fine. Daniel Bowler, though, has checked out. He's about a second and a half ahead of everybody, so he loves that clear blue sky in front of him. Yeah, and honestly, you know, he, he gets psyched out a little bit. Different opportunities in the race. Right now he's got to not get psyched out by that 15 card coming because he's holding them. He's holding them off at about 1.2, but he was, you know, 1.9, two seconds back, and he's starting to, to tick off some, some laps. Bobby Brill still pushing forward, so he just moved into 16th position. So Bobby Brill is on his way, and Jake Rowell fall, fell all the way back to 12th position. And so now it's just a matter of when do they start getting into pits. And obviously Jake will have to use one of those fast repairs to get that car fixed, uh, which thank goodness for, Pat, for fast repairs in this league, because if not, then he would be in a world of hurt right now. Yeah, honestly, I mean, that's – that's still yet. I mean, he's much slower than the rest of these guys. Um, I think Matt Johnson uh, is Bobby Brill coming to pit road this time. Brian Oh, oh big wreck. Thomas Rutherford involved. Uh, is that Crocker again, maybe? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, that Bobby Brill came into the pits. Uh Yep, that looks like Jay Graves. So we got a bunch of cars in there. Still green, though, because it was in the infield. Nobody was out there on the track doing that. So still green flag. That's not going to be good for them. 
just taking a look to see if there were any other playoff drivers involved in that. Matt Johnson is a lap down, but he just pitted five laps ago, so he was not involved. I don't think anybody else was in, involved in that that's in the playoffs. Jake Rowell coming into the pit road right now. Aaron Gerwitz going to pit this time around. I was listening to see if I heard any more names. Dean Brummett. Dean Brummett's in. Uh, Devin Zimmerman in. Jake Rowell in. So your playoff drivers, three of them in the pits right now. And Gerwitz not too far behind. I would imagine with Gerwitz coming, that'll likely bring the 57 of Pettit as well. Daniel Bowler coming in. Oh, Jacob Bowler. Smith, Adam Pettit, Aaron Gerwitz, all of them. So all of our playoff drivers coming down into pit road right now under green flag conditions. This is about to get really interesting. Yeah, and unfortunately for these guys, the longer run, so there were two different playoff fields almost, John. Early, you know, you saw Bowdler, uh, Bowdler, Brummett, Roel, and Zimmerman as the fastest four. At the end, you know, you still had Bowdler out front, Brummett was in third, but then the fastest cars became Adam Pettit and Aaron Gerwitz. So, you know, the cycle changed a little bit on the longer run on the tires where Gerwitz and Pettit continued to save their tires and try to be, you know, alive and well. Bad news for Matt Johnson. He's not a, oh, he just, not, not really sure what happened, but Matt Johnson just took out Chad Wampler. Jay Graves involved. And here come the playoff driver. Oh no, Devin Zimmerman went out to the outside and hit Jake Rowell. Oh, we are gonna have to go back and review that. Oh my goodness, huge hit on Jake Rowell. That is not gonna make him very happy at all. Let's go back and check out the wreck replay. Let's start off. Oh my gosh, so many wrecks, so many people still wrecking out there on the course. Let's go back and get a wreck replay here. Start that one with Matt Johnson is where it's gonna start with. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna go back and we're gonna take, take a look at what happened between Matt Johnson and Chad Wampler. So Matt Johnson in the number 62 there, coming up on the tail end of Chad Wampler, gets to his inside, goes down. Looks like he touches the grass a little bit. And when you touch the grass, you don't have anywhere to go but to the outside. So big wreck there. Now watch as we come through. And Zimmerman just kind of goes out to the outside. And Jake Rowell is there already. And so Jake with a huge hit there. So Jake Rowell and Zimmerman are going to have to come in and get some pit stuff done. Yeah, man, that was that was a wild one involving all kind of playoff drivers now. And just coming up on it. And, yeah, there's, I know uh, Zimmerman was just trying to avoid Wampler there uh, and just nowhere for him or Rowell to go. So, uh, big hits. And then uh, Mike Lewis comes around and hits Chad Wampler as well. So, Man, all sorts of damage out there, and we are under caution. Yeah, that one that one got crazy quick. And honestly, I'm, I'm interested to see where some of these guys are going to cycle out, Sean, because a lot of our playoffs drivers involved in that just had pitted. So I will tell you one thing that I do want to say for Jake Rowell and Devin Zimmerman. They just used a fast repair based on the wreck they were involved in before. They're likely going to use another one here, so things getting a little bit hairy for some of them. Yeah, Jake Rowell still, uh, based on my scoring, has not pitted again yet. Although uh, Devin Zimmerman is in the pits right now getting some work done. There's his fast repair. You can just see all that stuff happen uh, right there on screen. So now up front, we had David Duke, but he's going to come down into the pits. And so Daniel Bowler will cycle back through to be the leader once again. Yeah, and it's, man, that that's tough for some of our guys. Obviously, you know, a tough, obvious tough situation for the guys involved, Devin Zimmerman and Jake Rowell. But on the flip side of that, Sean, it's going to be tough for the guys like Aaron Gerwitz, like Adam Pettit, who were better on the longer run side of things and not really getting that opportunity. I do know, you know, just looking at like Dean Brummett, who's run third most of this race. I know a lot of these cars are going to be waves, but right now I'm not sure he's going to cycle out where he pitted. It seems I know he's behind Gerwitz. He's behind Adam Pettit. He's behind David Duke, so he's going to be further back in the field than he was typically running. Okay, so I've got to, I've got to give a shout-out here really quick. Take a look at Corey Knight here in the number 90 Griffith CPA firm car. This guy was three laps down because his breaker went off in his house. He texted me and said, my breaker just went off. i got to go get it turned back on. He missed the start of the race, went three laps down, and now he is back on the lead lap, slotted in in the 10th position. 
Watch out for the number 90 machine coming to get new tires. Might reach up here and win his first Mid-South Madness race. Now, I heard a, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was going to say, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but Corey Knight was actually the founder of Mid-South Madness. So uh, one of those guys that started this league. Yeah, that's what I was going to, you know, kind of add on to. A lot of guys having the mindset that, you know, typically when you think about leagues, you know, like for this league and South Madness, we're two seasons in now. Corey hasn't found victory lane as a league owner. Uh, another good buddy of mine, Chris Woodard, uh, we're about to start season two of his league. He hasn't found victory lane yet. A lot of times the mindset that league owners don't typically win because they find talent better than themselves to better themselves, you know, to make themselves better as a driver. A lot, you know, a lot of that same type of deal going on with Corey, but I will give Corey, you know, the tip of my hat because it has made him a much better driver than going back to season one at Daytona. I'm not saying he was a bad driver then, but he's a much better driver now. So by putting this talent around him, he's learned a lot. Kudos to him for that. Just taking a look at Jake Rowell, and I think he's trying to get the wave around here and then wondering if he's going to come into the pits and get something repaired because he is certainly damaged. Uh, you can see that car is all banged up, and here he comes down into pit road. So that is likely going to put him a lap down, but he desperately needs to get that car fixed after that uh, that run-in with Devin Zimmerman there. And so Daniel Bowler will be up in the lead, and these other guys will get their wave arounds. So right now, you know, just, just looking at it, the three guys that are out right now, Devin Zimmerman, Matthew Johnson, and Jake Rowell. Now, two of those names have been at the front most of the night. I think Jake ran no worse than about fourth or fifth. Zimmerman got some damage. He fell back. But before that, he was running about fourth or fifth as well. So now they've kind of found the hardship. And unfortunately for those guys, a lot of good finishes. When you talk about push coming to shove, good finish, good finish, good finish. You're due a bad finish. So it's going to take some real hard fight out of those guys to slice through the non-playoff drivers and get back to the front. Well, up front right now, we got Daniel Bowler, and then in the second position, Jacob Smith, who came on really strong there at the end of that run. Then Adam Pettit making his way into the top three back there in third place. Yeah, and again, you know, I know I said a lot of guys, hey, they don't let the race change. They've got to go for it. Adam Pettit elected to not go for it, and now the race has came to him. He's third place. Aaron Gerwitz was kind of pushing the issue earlier, trying to make what he could make out of it right now you know it's got him transferred in the four guys on the bottom of your screen as we go back playoff drivers daniel bowler though continuing to lead this thing wants to keep going for it and he's doing that right now adam pettit up to third i think dean brum is going to fall in about fifth place maybe sixth place jacob smith trying to track down daniel bowler and spoil the parade that is up there well, and then back towards the back of the pack, we got three guys that are a lap down that are still currently in the playoffs. And so Matthew Johnson, Devin Zimmerman, Jake Rowell. And so they desperately need to move up so they can get that lucky dog position. So right now, Matthew Johnson holding that lucky dog position if there happens to be a caution. And so uh, they got to get those laps back. Yeah, and honestly, you know, the, the biggest swing, John, if possible, let's key in on the one car real quick. Bobby Brill. He has not found the fast way around this racetrack at all tonight. With three guys a lap down with some damage. Bobby Brill right now is that final. Oh, transfer. we got Aaron oh, Gerwitz around. Aaron Gerwitz around. Dean Brummett involved. Oh, huge hit there. See if he can get that car going. Motor is blown on the Dean Brummett machine. Going to try to limp it back to pit road and hopefully... Dean has a fast repair left. Oh, we will go back. Let's let's take a look at that wreck replay, find out what happened. I saw Aaron Gertwitz there on the inside. Not really sure how this all happened. We did not see it live. But Dean David, Brummett's going to be on the outside here of David Duke. Yeah, David Duke maybe chopped his nose. Uh, I, I think that Dean Brummett just ran out of room there on the outside. And so... Uh, we'll go back one more time and take a look at that from a different angle, possibly. Dean's going to get hit again here. See, he still has his hood at that point. To oh. oh, cleanup crew. So, again, oh, just such a hard hit for Gerwitz. 
And so this changes things. And those guys that were a lap down there, I mean, they're still going to be a lap down. But uh, but that gives Matthew Johnson the lucky dog to come back onto the lead lap. Well, if you're Daniel Bowdler here, you play the game. You know, you, you don't pit. Forget what the rest of the guys are doing. Even if second on back pits, you stay out, Sean. And I know a lot of guys are going to say, man, that's, that's plain stupid. Why would you do that? You don't want those playoff drivers that are a lap down to get a wave around. You want to stay out. The way they're racing right now, those guys got to scramble to get back on the lead lap. You want to make sure you pin them down. Or if by chance you're the 15, and I, I know Daniel Ballard, you know, he, he did stay out here, but for the 15, if Daniel Ballard would have pitted, 15's got nothing to lose. Dean Brummett was involved in an accident. He's got to keep those guys a lap down, as many of them as he can. Matt Johnson got the lead lap back. So, you know, if, if you were Jacob, that's where you start talking, you know, hey, buddy, I, I don't want them to get back on the lead lap, have a chance to get by me. I got to start at the back. He stays out and keeps the wave rounds from happening. So Jake Rowell and Devin Zimmerman not out of it yet. Right now, currently, Devin Zimmerman, uh, Jake Rowell uh, are showing a lap down. Matthew Johnson got back on the lead lap now. So uh, three guys that are at least a lap down that are in the playoffs. So Devin Zimmerman, Jake Rowell, Aaron Gerwitz. If it ended right now, then those would be the three that are out. But we still got 26 laps to go. Anything can happen here in Vegas. Not really sure what's going on with the Aaron Gerwitz machine. Maybe having to take a tow would have been Gerwitz because I didn't see him involved in any accidents. But yet he still sets on pit road. Oh, he laps down now. He, he was the one that Dean Brummett got into. Uh, so here's the replay back one more time. You can see Aaron Gerwitz down there on the inside. So uh, I think well, I, his I, engine just blew. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't know, you know, what was causing him to be two down because to my knowledge, he didn't have a single incident point uh, up to that. Maybe a 4X from the contact earlier, but nothing major, you know, that he needed a, a fast repair for. So likely just having to take that tow. Now the final car three laps down on the racetrack and honestly sean with only 25 laps to go it's it's almost over for aaron gerwitz the problem now for matt johnson bobby brill you guys now hold that bottom two spots at the transfer of the playoffs just got to stay ahead of the guys that are lapped down jake Rowell and Devin Zimmerman. So Devin Zimmerman, Jake Rowell, hoping for another caution, but they're going to have to fight each other and Thomas Rutherford for that uh, lucky dog position. So a uh, huge race about to happen here between Jake Rowell, Devin Zimmerman, and Thomas Rutherford back here, these three cars. Well, here's where it could get crazy, Sean. Now, while, while Gerwitz is a lap down, uh, to my knowledge, Matt Johnson, Devin Zimmerman, and Jake Rowell all out of fast repairs. Matt Johnson uh, got damaged, had to pit, and then uh, involved in the incident with Chad Wampler would have been his second fast repair. That's just by my calculation. I know Zimmerman and Roel, or at least Zimmerman, maybe not Roel, at least Zimmerman out of fast repair. Roel, if he didn't use his, he has one left. If he did, he's out. So if they get involved in an accident that blows their motor, they don't have the luxury that Gerwitz does. Gerwitz has got a fast repair. He'll be back out quick, fast, and in a hurry. Now, actually, only two laps down what I'm seeing for Gerwitz. He was three. Now he's two. Not sure what happened. But he's back out on the racetrack with another fast repair to use. So they, above all else, instead of racing too hard, have to memorize that and know that Gerwitz can go all out for the last 20 laps of this race. So 24 laps to go. We're here at Las Vegas. You got the bottom three all a lap down. Uh, so the bottom three of the playoffs all a lap down right now. This is about to get crazy. Got to get a little bit lucky in Las Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And in 24 laps, Sean, we're going to find out just what happens in Vegas. I guarantee you there's going to be some really hurt feelings tonight because three of these guys are going home. Daniel Bowler bringing us back to the green flag here. As pace car dives off, Daniel Bowler gets the green flag. He takes off, and he will once again lead this race. He's got a couple of hungry hounds behind him. Jacob Smith never likes to lose. Brad Herman had a hot hand here as of late. Man himself that's just let things develop around him, Adam Pettit in the 57 car. So uh, plenty of opportunity here. David Duke in fifth position. Hasn't got a win yet. 
Uh, try to capitalize on that, get a little bit closer. He's going to give Adam Pettit some space down into three there. Uh, really interested to see, you know, what these guys are willing to do back in the pack. Zimmerman, Roel, those type of guys. And actually on my screen, that's who I'm about to ride with here for a little while. Just see what happens. When it comes oh, yellow to flag, time. yellow flag. And Devin Zimmerman has the lucky dog. And so Devin Zimmerman's going to get back on the lead lap. It looks like it's Mike Lewis and Brian Crocker once again getting involved in this one. Yeah, it's right now, though, the good news for these guys, if you're Jake or if you're Dean, I'll get it right here in a second. If you're Daniel <laughs> Bowler and the guys behind him, you pit now, you give Gerwitz and Roel the wave around. Do you do that or do you not? Let's see if we can find out what happened here with Mike Lewis. Oh, there was some wrecking in front of him. So looks like the 86, that's Brian Crocker. And then Gerwitz he got into Gerwitz. Yeah, he got into Gerwitz there. Also Johnson back there towards the back as well. So Johnson got a little bit of damage on that also. So uh, we'll go back once again. Let's take a look at this from uh, Crocker's perspective, I believe. Lot. Just Trevelyan up there. Yeah, just ran out of room. Gerwitz there, and uh, I don't, I don't think Johnson got any damage there. So I think Johnson might be okay. But Crocker goes ahead and takes that toe into pit road. Looks like we got the 96 of Joe Ruggles in there in the infield as well. So once again, I mean, the more cautions that happen here, the better chance there is of some of these guys getting back on the lead lap. And if that happens, it's a whole new ball game, Brandon. Well, it's it's kind of a fine line, in my opinion, because 21 laps ago, yes, they get back on the lead lap, but then they've got to have enough time, Sean. They've got to be able to go. So, like for Zimmerman, Zimmerman right now, even though he's on the lead lap, he's still a drop driver. He's still out of this thing. Not only is he going to start behind of all of the lead lap cars and the playoff drivers, but because he got lucky dog, he's now going to start behind every single race car on the track. So he now has to go out, and I think it's Dean Brummett is the low man right now that he's chasing. Maybe Bobby Brill still. Uh, it looks like, actually, it looks like it's going to be Brill because Brummett's in 11th. Uh, of course, Dow wasn't in the playoffs. Yeah, Bobby Brill is going to be the guy he's chasing. So while he's going to be, you know, Bobby Brill's in 14th. You talk about uh, Devin Zimmerman. He's going to be in 23rd or 20th. Sorry, got my numbers mixed up. But he's going to start 33rd. If all of these cars, I'm not sure if all of our cars are still on the track. I know Joe Ruggles is, Trevelyan was, uh, Crocker was. So actually, he'll start in 30th position. So he'll be the 30th car on the racetrack, Sean, and he has to drive up to the 14th place car, Bobby Brill. He has to pass, what is it, 16 cars in order to qualify for this thing. So about to see the best driving Devin Zimmerman, Devin Zimmerman has left in this season. And now we got another aspect to this whole thing. All these cautions coming out. If we get some multiple green, white checker flags, now fuel comes into play because these guys last pitted, these leaders last pitted on lap 65, and you can only go about 30 to 35 laps on fuel here. Yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be a grab bag of things. Um, the one thing I'm, I want to just check, Devin Zimmerman last pitted on what lap? Devin Zimmerman last pitted on lap. Uh, actually, he's in the pits right now, so uh, so I don't have that data. So he is in the pits. I will tell you that is the smartest move Devin Zimmerman has made all season. I'm not I, saying he doesn't make good decisions. That's the best one. I 100% agree with you. So he's going to come in. He's going to get some tires, get back out there. And so uh, this is going to get to be a lot of fun because he's going to have fresh tires. He's going to be slotted in a 20th spot. This is – Brandon, I'm having so much fun here. I love Las Vegas. Oh, I, Las Vegas is a, is a top 10 track for me. I wouldn't quite put it in my top five, but these guys, given it all they've got, man, it has me on edge. I am nervous as can be. I don't have anything to lose. I'm going to show up next week no matter who qualifies. I'm still going to broadcast this thing, but, man, you know, some of my really, really good friends, Dean Brummett, Jake Rowell, Bobby Brill, Daniel Bowler. Uh, like I said, Gerwitz, me and him become pretty decent friends. They're all battling for this thing. And we're kind of, we're, we're overlooking the rest of the field. The rest of the field season's coming to an end. They're trying to grab the money while it's still on the line for this season. But, man, these playoff drivers have got me nervous, Sean. 
Well, Aaron Gerwitz uh, still two laps down. Uh, you got Jake Rowell still one lap down, but right now he is the the uh, first car a lap down, so he could potentially have the lucky dog if another caution flag comes out. Then you have Devin Zimmerman and Matthew Johnson side by side, 19th and 20th positions, and so this is <laughs> and, and that's who's battling for that last playoff spot. I don't want to wish anything bad on anyone involved. But let's say Brad Herman, he, he wants this win. You know, he wants the money. Daniel Bowler takes a defensive line. Now, Daniel bowler has been clean and clear all night long. He's been con. But just one battle could send him to the back. You know, if he goes, not even not even saying that Herman wrecks him. If he goes, pulls a late block, bumps him up out of the groove, he's dropping like a rock. He's no longer the safe guy. He's been the safest one all night. He's not dropped worse than first, to my knowledge. Maybe the second for a moment. But, you know, he's he's been up front. He's been practicing hard all week long, trying to win this money. The bad news is one accident to take that all away. I hope, you know, I hope the guys that are up front are, are conscious of that. They know what's going on around them. They know who's around them and what's going to happen because Bowler's about to take his back green flag racing here off of turn number four not sure what's happening on my screen the pace cars lag down i see it still on your screen there's the pace car coming back he's going to leave pit road now back in control of daniel bowler and he's gone coming to 17 to go sean and he's going to go ahead and clear jacob smith there on the inside and so that's always been his strategy just get clear and then get away from everybody else and so there he goes and so we will keep an eye on the back of the pack here. So if there's another caution, currently right now, Jake Rowell would get the lucky dog, and that would put him back on the lead lap. So a uh, lot of different scenarios playing out right now, Brandon. Yeah, and just I'm watching. I'm riding along with Devin Zimmerman to keep you guys updated. So far into turn number three, he's picked up zero spots in his quest. He's about to get one because Chris Massey peels off to serve a penalty. Uh, he's riding right around Aaron Gerwitz in the back. Not really going the way that Zimmerman needs it to go to try to get back up through the field. Jacob Smith going to the inside of Daniel Bowler. He is going to go for that lead right now. And he's going to be side by side with Daniel. After Daniel's got to be careful. Our, yeah, after the luck that our playoff drivers had, man, I hope Daniel just lets him go. Let Brad Herman go. <laughs> let that third place car, the third car in line go. Don't fight these guys. I, I can't tell just who the paint scheme is on that third place car right now, or fourth place car as we run. That, that's Jonathan Byer. So Jonathan Byer from Flashpoint Racing up there in fourth position. Great driver, just some bad luck this season. Uh, but, man, he is showing it right now. So uh, Jacob Smith taking the lead here. Looks like uh, that's Chris Massey coming back out on the track after his penalty. And so they're going to try to catch him here shortly. Yeah, if I'm Daniel Bowler, I'm cool to back all the way up to six because that's where you find the next playoff driver, Adam Pettit, running in six. Bad news is Dean Brummett, you know, he got into a bad, bad spot. He's knocking him off. He's already back up to eighth. He is coming for it. Zimmerman continuing to try to march his way up through here, but, you know, I see Roel. He's a lap down. Matt Johnson's up there around him. I think Johnson holds the final transfer spot, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Uh, right now, yes, that's correct. Uh, Devin Zimmerman trying to track him down. Johnson is up in 15th position. Devin Zimmerman in 17th position. So not too far away from that. But Daniel Bradler retakes the lead. Very, very strong, strong move by Bradler. Wanted to get away from these guys as they continue to figure it out. But you look back there again, we talked about him before, Dean Brummett. He's got a group of cars separating him from the lead, and he's hanging it out, man. He's going for it. Um, he's just on the high line trying to roll that high side, make it work. A little bit crazy of him as well because he's the second of our uh, playoff drivers right now. Even though he's running an eighth, he's in a transfer spot. Um, Devin Zimmerman with just 12 laps to go trying to – oh, okay. There was smoke from a car. It looked like they were lagging a little bit. Brummett right in the mix of it, though. So if something goes haywire here, Brummett has to pull some evasive. Oh, maneuvers. we got three wide, almost four wide. Dean's going to get out of that. It's Brad Herman. Going to go to the high side, get shuffled out a little bit. Uh, unfortunate news, Devin Zimmerman, he has gotten no closer to that 62 car that he's been chasing down. So Zimmerman's still out for the moment. Well, still one lap down, needing a caution. Now, if a caution happens here, Jake Rowell gets back on the on the lead lap, 
and it's a whole new ball game for everybody. And with the way these guys are driving right now, again, three wide. If I'm Dean Brum, if I'm in his ear, I'm saying, oh, they're going to touch. I'm telling Dean, man, get out of there. Get out of there. I know it's Adam Pettit on your back bumper. Let him go. That's just the third transfer spot. Don't worry about it. And while all this is going on, Daniel Bowler has opened up over a second lead on second place. So we're not really worried about Daniel Bowler right now. We are worried about this race right here that we're watching because it is the closest on the track and the most likely to cause some damage. See, these guys here, you're thinking, man, you know, Dean Brum is a playoff driver. What are they doing? They're going for a payday. Oh, we were paying out the top so many spots, and they're trying to all fit their cars into those spots that are getting a payday. They're not racing for a championship. They're racing for money. Money talks, Sean. They're, they're not going to lay down for anybody. Obviously not going to. I'm not going to try to screw over any of our playoff drivers, but uh, let's, let's, try, let's hop back with Devin Zimmerman real quick because that's where it's starting to heat up. Oh, and we got a wreck. That's Jake, Jake Rowell. Rowell. Now, here's the bad news. Jake Rowell would have been lucky, dog. And now he will not be. And now he will not be. That should pass it, though. On to Aaron Gerwitz to come from two laps down, down to only one. So Aaron Gerwitz going to equalize. Now Jake will be running with Aaron Gerwitz. Not a lot of not a lot of time left, and about two cars right now separate Zimmerman from a playoff spot, tra a transfer spot that is. Uh, then another four or five cars from Bobby Brill. So the back half of this field starting to tighten up. Dent Wizard going to take us to our wreck replay for that one. And it looks like uh, we got three wide action here as well. So everybody trying to make up spots. And for good reason, Jake Royal needs those spots as desperately as he could possibly get them. And so he gets three wide. And it looks like him and Setzer just kind of uh, run out of space together there. Yeah, I, I think he was hoping something was going to happen quick. Realized it probably wasn't. So he was just going to go for what he could go for. Devin Zimmerman has blown my mind just now, though. He pitted, Sean. After the tires that he had that were newer than everyone else, he followed down pit road. So unless he takes two here, he's kind of throwing away an opportunity. Yeah, if he had stayed out, he would have moved all the way up into the third position and almost guaranteed him a spot. And uh, But he decides to stay out, uh, get some fresh tires once again. So we will find out how that strategy works out for him shortly. Riding along to see what he does here. Right side's up, so he's definitely taking rights. So uh, far back. Right, rights only. Right rights only. So a nice little strategy there. That's going to put him out in about 13th position. Matthew Johnson will now fall down into the cut. I think it was Bobby Brill. Looked like he stayed out there trying to make something happen. Of course, Gerwitz going to be. I think it was Gerwitz that said he was a lucky dog. Gerwitz going to get new tires. Start at the back here. Uh, unfortunately for Gerwitz, I don't know if there's going to be enough laps where he can really get anything done. Not giving up, though. That 09 car continues to fight, trying to find a better day. Yeah, but the other nine, Jake Rowell, back still a lap down. And now he's got damage, and he has not pitted. And uh, looks like Thomas Rutherford is coming into the pits. So uh, Jake Rowell, if he stays out, up. Uh, Eh, I think he's going to come down. So uh, I was going to say, if he stays out, then he would be in that lucky dog position. So uh, he's going to come down. He is going to get some fresh tires and some fuel. All right, we'll see how this thing all works out. But uh, Jake Rowell is definitely 100% going to need another caution in order to get back on that lead lap. Yeah, and he's still going to start tail end of that longest line. Uh, just to update you guys, the five transfer drivers in order currently for this restart. Dean Brummett, Adam Pettit. Bobby Brill, Daniel Bowler, and Devin Zimmerman. So Daniel Bowler in unfamiliar territory right now, Sean. Hopefully he can continue on. He's back further than he's been all night. Has not had to run in this traffic. So I know it doesn't seem like that many cars ahead of him, but still yet more than there has been all night. Uh, you'll see his search for Adam Pettit, Bobby Brill, Dean Brummett, those guys trying to make it work didn't feel they were as fast as some of the other cars obviously knew Zimmerman was coming try to get some separation and I think it's the right call especially you know uh, when you look even back to the third of those guys Bobby Brill 
Um, Zimmerman's the guy they're chasing. Matt Johnson behind him. So even, you know, Zimmerman's holding the final spot. So they're really racing Matt Johnson. You've got Dean Brummett, Adam Pettit, Bobby Brill on in a fourth, fifth, and sixth. And Matt Johnson will be starting 16th. So 10-car um, cushion right now, Sean, with just a handful to go. Well, Brandon, I don't think we're done wrecking yet, and here's why. you got Brandon Key on uh, tires that were last changed back on lap 65. So 30-lap old tires. You have Greg Olnick, who last put it on lap 74. So his tires are about 21 laps old. And then you have everybody else that just pitted on lap 93. Everybody has fresh tires except for the top two. That spells danger. I'm going to tell you. My gut's telling me right now that Matt Johnson is somehow going to make this championship round. And as crazy as that sounds, that would mean one of the guys up front crash. And as you said, I think it would have been about 31 laps on the tires of Brandon Key, 21 on the tires of, uh, of Greg Brad Olnick. Herman, yeah. Or Greg, Greg, Greg Olnick. Olnick yeah. Yeah. Greg Olnick. So a lot of wheel spin. Bobby Brill just reminded everybody, watch for wheel spin. The guys on the bottom line, Pettit, Bowler Brill, no, Pettit and Bowler. They might be okay. They can dip down to the apron if there's tire spin, but Dean Brummett, Bobby Brill on that high line in the danger zone. The tire spin is going to kick off to the right. We're about to find out, though, because we're going back green flag racing as we're coming off of turn number four. The final hoorah of three of these drivers. Pace car waiting to make that last second left turn. He's off. Brandon Key is gone. No tire spin from the 11 machine. A little bit slower start from Olnick, but no tire spin. It looked like they're pretty clean through the field so far. Yeah, so far so good. That outside, Dean Brummett looked to the outside. I think some people are into the wall on the outside there, but looks like everybody's okay. Uh, Jonathan Byer wiggling a little bit on that turn. Daniel Bowler getting a big push from Brad Herman as they're back in traffic further than they've been in a while. Pretty cut and drive up front as Brandon Key played the strategy. The nine car hitting, so I'm not sure what's going on with Jake Ruel. Ooh, Powler gets ever so close to Herman back there. And they're going to shuffle three to go. What's going to happen? Dean Brummett's rebound. He's trying for it. He's going outside for the lead, John. And he's been loving that outside line all night long. And so he will – oh, he almost makes the pass. Can't quite clear him just yet. I think he will come in off this turn, though. And there oh, he goes. David Duke on a big slide into the wall coming down the track. He's going to clip. And we've Adam got a Pettit. yellow. Adam Pettit falling backwards quickly. Oh, that's huge. That is huge. Now, I will let you know, I, Jake Rowell, was, uh, he did go through the pits, uh, that sort of thing, uh, but he will not be the lucky dog. I believe the lucky dog will be Danny Dow when all is said and done. But we're going to have, looks like a green-white checker. And Dean Brummett is going to have the lead. Bobby Brill finally making the track work a little bit. He's up to third going to have a shot at it. Dent Wizard going to take us back to the wreck replay. I think Duke just got in a big slide off the floor. Try to keep it off of guys and Adam Pettit wound up being an unlucky guy in a pack of a bunch of cars. David Duke there on this in the 78 car there on the bottom of the track. So not quite three wide there, but he gets a nice little run. You can see how, how far out he's getting from everybody else. But he moves up the track, loses it. Comes back down, takes out Pettit. Looks like takes out Jacob Smith as well. Hits really hard on that infield wall. And so I think Bobby Brill may have gotten some of this too. Well, I want to watch. Actually, that's who I was about to ask to ride through because if he doesn't, he made a power move to give up that high line, cut to the bottom, and just decide, Sean, if we can. Let's take a look at that. Watch watch here. He's going to go back to the bottom and say, no, nah, you guys can have it. I'm not worried about it. Oh, stay he stay clear of it. Yeah. So a beautiful move by Bobby Brill. And you can see Daniel Bowler coming to your screen there as well. So a couple of our playoff drives, uh, drivers avoiding the situation. Adam Pettit not avoiding. And right now, that puts Adam Pettit behind the eight ball. 
because now he will be cut from the playoffs if things finish the way they are right now. Yeah, and just looking. I think Adam Pettit looking like he's going to restart at 19th. He's going to try to get to 13th in order to transfer because Matt Johnson holds that spot right now, which actually, let me look here. Derwin's Rowell. Yeah, he's going to need to track down the 62 of Matt Johnson, who's the final transfer right now. Zimmerman, though, only two spots ahead of him. So if something goes haywire for Zimmerman or any of these playoff drivers, they'll join Adam Pettit at the back in a shootout. The bad news is, is I would much rather Sean to have wrecked on lap one than right now. Because if you wreck right now, you don't have the time to get it back. If you'd crash on wreck or on lap one, you had 99 more to do it. Just looking back right now, so Jake Rowell still a lap down. Aaron Gerwitz still a lap down. So those two, uh, unless we get some green-white checkered flags, they will definitely be eliminated. Then you have Adam Pettit, who will start off in the 19th position, just like you said. Uh, he might creep up to 18th here, but uh, 19th or 18th. Uh, but he still has at least six positions to get to the next cutoff. And so uh, Adam's going to have to drive like a man possessed. And sometimes, hey, Brandon, sometimes if you're mad and you're driving like that, you focus more and you get more out of that car. Sometimes that happens. My car, I drive it so much better when I'm mad. When something like what happens to Adam Bennett happens to me, I'm going for it. I'm going three wide, four wide. If you guys want to go five wide, I'm trying to get it back. I'm racing for a championship. Well, all you guys watching out there in the chat right now, definitely hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, because we will be back next week for the championship round at Auto Club Speedway. This is going to, if, if you think tonight's been crazy, just wait until the actual money's on the line. Yeah, that's where it's about to get wild is when they really start racing for that $500. And Brandon, I got to tell you, look in the third position, the guy that we didn't think could figure anything out here at Las Vegas for the first 60 laps of this race. Bobby Brill showing his true colors up there in third position, looking really good now. You can't keep a champion down, and Bobby Brill is one way, one race away, three laps away from racing for that championship, so we'll see what he can do. So they're going to come down the back stretch here. All right, Brandon. Three laps to go. Green, white, checker. Who is your pick? And he's speechless, folks. He is speechless right now, and so am I. So uh, what a fantastic race so far. Actually, Brandon jumped down into the race chatter, I think, to talk to, to Bobby Brill. Brandon, what's going on down there in the race chatter? I was trying to get a mindset of Bobby Brill, and him and O'Shell have become big teammates. And O'Shell told me that he's in concentration mode. So I just let him know, you know, the stats of what he's got going on. Let him refocus and try to hang on to it here because he's holding tight to a transfer spot right now. Dean Brummett takes off. He's going back to the race lead. He's trying to make sure he races for it, but he better be careful. Bobby Brill searching for second right now. Brandon Key inside. Bobby going to wash up a hair. Try to clear for second. If he can get to second, I don't think he's worried about Dean. He's worried about transferring. Got a couple of hungry hounds around him. Going to watch for a moment what happens with Adam Pettit back here. See if he can get anywhere near where he needs to be as we take the white flag. He's going for it, man. He is hammered down, but don't look now. Bobby Brill trying to close the gap. Here comes Fowler back from about fourth position or going for fourth position now trying to get there gonna run out of time for the race win but gonna pick off as many as he can maybe gonna be able to get third here they're scrambling all sorts of movement back there but right now dean brummett coming around turns three and four and it looks like dean brummett will win the hold em or fold em 150 here at las vegas with bobby brill right behind yeah, Daniel Bowler going to be close for third position. Not sure if it's going to go to him or, yeah, he's actually going to grab that by four one-thousandths. Just an incredible race. Dean Brummett on his rebound race from COVID and double pneumonia is back in victory lane for the third time this season. 
the heartbreak on the other side of this, Sean. Adam Pettit, Jake Roel, Aaron Gerwitz will be eliminated. Now, Sean, we talk back to who we said our three championship favorites were. Two of them eliminated tonight. That is absolutely correct. So it's going to be a fun race next week because there are some people there that uh, nobody expected to be there. But Dean Brummett out there burning it down. We've got a few others burning it down too. Matthew Johnson burning it down. You got uh, you got Bobby Brill out there burning it down. You got Brian O'Shell burning it down. <laughs> we're we're having a great time. Yeah, it's just a party in Vegas. This one's over with. I'd say O'Shell's just excited as Bobby is. They've become pretty much teammates unofficially. Dean Brummett, the man though, right now. Took some cash. The rebound from COVID. I can't wait to do that interview because, man, last week we saw Dean at the worst we've seen him. And I think, Sean, here in just a few moments, we're going to see Dean at the best we've ever seen him. Absolutely. And so let's pull up the results. Oh, he's got your teammate, his teammate down there, Jacob Smith, doing some donuts as well. So uh, Dean Brummett from Striker Motorsports up in first place. Bobby Brill, an independent driver in second. Daniel Bowdler in third. Jacob Smith in fourth. Fifth place going to be Brandon Key. Sixth place, Brian O'Shell. Seventh place, Brad Herman. And eighth place, Jonathan Byer. Ninth place, Devin Zimmerman earns his way into the championship. Greg Olnick in 10th, Danny Setzer in 11th, and Matthew Johnson with the final playoff position. 13th place, going to be Michael Lepicki. 14th, Corey Knight, a solid run for Corey Knight. 15th, Derek De Silva. 16th, Jay Graves Jr. 17th, Chris Massey. 18th, Sean Dice. 19th, Adam Pettit. And 20th, Thomas Rutherford. So uh, that rounds out your top 20. Of course, the, the probably the most disappointed one of those top 20, Adam Pettit, with a, uh, with a top 20 finish, but not enough to move on to next round. Such a tough night for Adam Pettit because most – I would go as far as to say about 85% of this race, Adam Pettit rode in a transfer spot regardless of where he was on the racetrack and some unfortunate, well, Dean's, Dean's going to have a rough time. Hopefully they weren't sending that car to R and D. Uh, he's having a great time, but that car is having a tough time. But Adam Pettit, man, just missed it. Well, Dean Brummett just wanted to ride around that track a few more times. We will get to him very shortly here, but let's see if we can't get Daniel Badler uh, up here to, uh, to talk a little bit about what happened in this race, because uh, he led pretty much 75% of it. Daniel Bowler, Sean and Brandon up in the booth. How's it going, buddy? Oh, not too bad. You can finally take a breath here. On to next week. Well, man, I mean, you, you led most of that race, but then on that last couple of restarts, you kind of got filtered back a little bit. What was the mindset on those last couple of restarts as you were probably sitting back in ninth or tenth position? Oh, uh, I was slid my box there on that last pit stop that we made, and I was pretty disappointed in myself, but... Uh, Knew I just needed to try and stay calm, just stay the where I was. Some other guys had had some trouble. Um, just basically keep it clean, bring it home. But yeah, definitely very upset with myself. And I think you guys all know how I am when I get back there like that. I want to go back to the front, but just had to be patient there and try and make it back. Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to chime in here. I'm going to let you know one of only three drivers in the field with zero incident points on the night so you kept that six machine you know you kept it clean all night long but you know the fight's not over the fight's not over for another seven days before we revisit mid-south madness what is your mindset like going into championship week uh, you know i'm just i'm really excited to be in the championship five i was really excited to get to this round i mean if you look back at uh the playoff group that we had there was never a week that was just a gimme of being able to move on to the next week. You know, you always felt like you had to be pushing and doing the best you could to stay up front. Um, Cause any one of those guys could have been up front at any time in any of those races, really, I feel like. So um, just keep my, keep my head down, keep plugging away and keep working on my long runs. I feel like I got a lot better at those this week. That was my main focus all week long. Um, I actually didn't even practice much for short run stuff until today before the race and couldn't believe it. I ended up with the pole. I was missing a lot of speed all week compared to some of these other guys, but worked out for us. Uh, zero X pretty easy to keep when you're out front most of that time, but some good racing there at the end, it was pretty hard. Uh, 
just want to thank everybody for racing me clean. Yeah, man. I mean, just a fantastic race and still keeping steak dance racing in this thing. And I promise you, if you win this championship, Daniel, I am eating as many steaks as I possibly can that week. If I win this championship, I think there's a lot of us going to eat as many steaks as we can that week. Uh, I really hope so. I think we got a good shot at it, but man, definitely a really strong field of guys left uh, in this playoffs. I mean, Dean coming back off of COVID, it was awesome to see him back out here and man, then he goes out and wins the thing. So hats off to him. Uh, he's going to be one tough competitor. I think everybody can see that now if they didn't already. And, you know, Bobby Brill has been good every week. And I think they said Zimmerman was still in there. He's always there at the end, man. He had a good comeback and um, I'm not sure who the last guy was. Ma and Matthew then, Johnson, Matthew Johnson. Yep. Yeah, he has had some tough starts, but he sure seems to show up at the end. So you can't ever count him out either. Absolutely, buddy. Well, we're going to let you get right back to it. Uh, we're going to let you get back down to your team. We will see you next week at Auto Club Speedway. All right, guys. Sounds awesome. I'll see you guys next week. All right, buddy. Congratulations. All right. Well, let's see if we can uh, get Bobby Brill in here. Uh, let's pull him up into the into the broadcast booth. Bobby Brill, Sean, and Brandon up in the booth. How's it going, buddy? Oh, hey. How you doing? Man, doing excellent. You know, we, we were watching you in the very first part of the race. We know you just got the track yesterday, and you were just trying to find something. Tell us tell us what you found. Oh, we just we just lost him. Let's let's see if I can get him back. Bobby, are you still with us? Yeah, I got you now. Okay, there you go. So so I was just saying, you know, we, we saw you in the very beginning of the race. We, you just bought this racetrack yesterday, so you were trying to find something out there on the track and just couldn't find it there for a while. What did you finally find that made you so fast? Uh, at the beginning of the race, me and, uh, me and Brian, we was trying to save some tires to hopefully have a long run and start catching the field. And, uh, Halfway through the race, we realized it wasn't working. We was just falling too far back to catch anybody. So we started pushing it a little harder. And got I got caught up in some trouble about middle of the race. So uh, basically just kept at it. And I got lucky I, pretty much, basically, is what it all boiled down to was luck. But kept fighting for it. Well, I will tell you, you know, first of all, congratulations, buddy. You're going to go on and race for the championship, the $500 payday next week at Auto Club. But, you know, the one question I have, and I asked Daniel the same question, you know, you, you showed very, very high ends of championship poise, you know, and, and staying alive and doing what you needed to do, even even though it didn't mean, you know, a race win. You, you found second place for it. What is your mindset like now from seven days out? of the championship this season just getting on the track and getting some laps in not waiting till the last minute to buy the track and start putting in laps uh i think that was a big factor of how i was performing at the begin beginning of the race this tonight uh and i just plan on going in there and trying to win and win it yeah, man. So Auto Club Speedway next week. I mean, first off, you have the track, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So so definitely a lot of work going into it this week. Um, and, and again, another one of those big tracks that uh, tires are going to be extremely important. Uh, nice wide track, a lot of space out there, kind of where you shine. So is, is that what you're looking forward to? Yeah. Uh, I was hoping this track was similar to uh, Michigan. I mean, when I started running laps on it, it felt like it was. But at the beginning of the race, it surely wasn't looking like it. Uh, but yeah, Auto Club, I think we ran the cup cars there a couple weeks back, and I did pretty decent at it. So hopefully I can have a better performance than I did when I ran the cup cars there. All right, buddy. Well, we're going to let you get right back to it. Congratulations on making it through to the championship. We can't wait to see what you do there, buddy. Alrighty, thank you, man. All right, buddy. Take care. Congratulations, buddy. All right. Well, let's see if we can uh, get the winner in here. Let's key him up, and let's see how it feels 
to come back from COVID and from double pneumonia to take this wing, this win. Dean Brummett, Sean and Brandon up in the booth, buddy. Congratulations. What a great race. Hey, what's up guys. How are y'all doing? Man, doing excellent. I, I don't think we're doing better than you though. I know, right? Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure you two aren't holding a Budweiser in your hands right now. So I'm, I'm doing <laughs> really awesome at this point. Well, man, take us through it because, I mean, I know you were up front pretty much the entire race. I mean, not not necessarily in first, but you were always in that first to fifth range. What was it that you saw at this track that made you so dominant? Um, practice was real good this week. Uh, setup was real, real good. Um, car was real tight. Um, and and the thing is, is like when it comes to a tight setup, you, you really see the, the drivers come out and um, – in practice tonight, I mean, I had the fastest lap in practice. Didn't didn't hit it very good for qualifying, but I was just slowly kind of moving up little by little by little. Uh, took the lead early on in the race. Actually raced uh, Daniel Badler for it. Got past him and uh, was just kind of able to to scoot away from him and then, you know, let, uh, let the tires kind of fall off. And he came back and I just wasn't, uh, I wasn't panicking tonight. Like it wasn't so much about racing. Uh, the track, I, they always say you race the track, not the people around you. But tonight I was racing everyone around me and uh, just managed to be the best of all of them. Well, I want to chime in for just a second. And Sean, I want to want to ask real quick, can we throw up Dean's screen for the viewers at home? I've got to. Oh, I, I apologize. I thought that I had that up there. That is my fault. Let's see it. So Dean Brummett in the number 25 Striker Motorsports car. Something I want to focus on here before I get into this. First of all, Dean. Uh, to address what you said, uh, you're correct. I don't have a Budweiser in my hand. I'm fat. I had a Kit Kat in my hand when you said that. I've done eight that since. But right there, the top line of this slide, I'm going to seem biased when I say this. Uh, obviously, big friends of Bobby Brill. I'm, I'm pulling for him in the championship. But Blue Well, West Virginia. I take it, you know, as you said, you're living in Princeton. I'm also from Princeton, West Virginia. So this is my guy. I want to see him win this next week. Bring this championship back to Princeton, West Virginia, Dean. You're heading into your final week here, and you've had a solid season. What's the mindset like as you have one more time to go for it? You know, it's uh, it's a little crazy right now, Brandon. Um, you know, so when it comes to iRacing, you know, we've, we've all been doing it either a few short months or in my case about eight years now. And the thing is, is no matter who you are, you want to get paid to drive race cars, right? And to be able to come into this Striker Motorsports team here with you, Sean, and, uh, you know, be able to have a, uh, I guess we'll call it a semi-pro gig driving race cars. Like, it's it's awesome. Like, you know, we go into this last race next week at Auto Club, and Michigan treated me pretty good. I uh, came up about 600 yards short there of winning with Bobby Brill. But the biggest thing with it is I'm just I'm having fun. I mean, you know, I after getting out of the hospital last week with uh, COVID and double pneumonia, I've got my second lease on life, I guess you call it. And the thing is, is I'm just I'm enjoying every second of it. And I mean, like how how many other guys get to say that they get paid to drive a race car? Uh, Because I know I'm one of them and I love every second of it. So we'll see what happens next week. And. Hopefully I'll get paid real good for driving a race car. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we, we've been talking all night about all the prize money that's out there. And, and I know, uh, I know Brandon was alluding to, to a couple of things, you know, you've got the possibility of a team championship because striker motorsports is up in first place in that you've got the possibility of an individual championship because you're right there in the playoff hunt. You've got the possibility of the clean driver award because you've been the cleanest driver all season long. So what is it? that you have to do next week to just kind of put all that aside and just go for one race? Uh, same thing you do every week. You know, you go, you sit in front of the, uh, you sit in front of the computer screen, you, you make your laps, you, you run everything that you can. And at days in, um, you know, through this entire, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to win out early at Bristol and get myself locked into the playoffs. And from there, it was just kind of a whole lot of figuring out what my competition was around me, trying to figure out who's good on long runs, who's good on short runs, who's good at this track, who's good at that track. And, you know, really with it at days in, it's just kind of a matter of when I go out there next week, I've got all these cars on the track. I'm racing four guys 
um, four very talented, very good at what they do guys. And like I said, when the, uh, when the checkered flag falls, uh, hopefully I have done everything that I can to put myself in position, you know, watch the drivers around me, uh, right pit strategy, everything to be the first of those. I don't need to win the race. I just need to win the race of over four other guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, those other four guys, if, if you don't already know, so Bobby Brill, Daniel Bowler, Devin Zimmerman, Matthew Johnson. So who do you think is your biggest competition there? Man, it's, it, it's tough to say. I mean, I, I can't really go and pick any one of those four guys out just because they have all earned a spot here um, in this final four or final five. I'm sorry, final five. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to pick any one of them that I'm going to look at and say, I'm a, you know, I think I can beat you or I think I can beat you. A day's in, you ball, uh, you guys have got your spot here. I've got my spot here and uh, we all earned it. Absolutely, buddy. Well, we're going to let you get right back to celebrating. Congratulations on your comeback race from COVID, double pneumonia, all that stuff. And you do it with a win, buddy. I can't wait to see what you do for an encore. Absolutely. Hey, real quick before I go, I've got a few people I'd like to thank. I'd like Please. to thank uh, Sean, I want to thank you here. Um, Silverback Tax Solutions, uh, Anheuser-Busch for brewing the greatest beverage to ever exist. Um, last week I was uh, scolded because even though I said it, I do still need to thank my, uh, my wife, my mom, uh, my little brother for letting me borrow his laptop and all of them getting the, uh, the equipment to me in the hospital to be able to uh, make the laps that I did. Uh, it's a lot nicer this week at 144 frames per second max graphics versus uh, last week at about 40 frames per second minimum graphics. So, um, guys, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank my pit crew. And uh, hey, uh, I'm not much of a not much California guy, but uh, we'll 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 invade with a yeehaw next week. <laughs> excellent buddy well have a great race next week i uh, have a fantastic week we will see you next week at auto club speedway hey see you guys have a great night all right man. congratulations buddy all right so let's talk about next week's race it is the championship brandon we're going to auto club speedway yeah and honestly it's about to get rowdy uh the one guy that i'm gonna pick i'm gonna tell you right now david duke 78 car um He's if, if you guys are watching this broadcast, this would be a little bit of a, a cheap moment, I guess, for some of our guys. If you need to know how to get around this place, David Duke's your guy. Uh, he's solid at this place. But, man, we're going, you know, tonight we went from eight drivers down to five. And in just seven days, Sean, we're going to go from five to the champion. So, you know, one more, one last ride for the guys in Mid-South Madness to try to capture that money. Yeah, man, it is going to be a fantastic race. I cannot wait to see what happens next week because we are going to ride into Auto Club uh, without a champion. We're going to ride out of Auto Club with a champion. But for right now, my name is Sean Griffith with Brandon Superman, Brand Browning. We are going to sign off for tonight. Everyone have a great evening, great week. We will see you next week at Auto Club Speedway for the championship. <laughs>